Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Harbor Space's 2020 graduation ceremony. It's uh, a very, very exciting opportunity for us to be able to share what has been the end of a very challenging year for all of us, um, where I believe that Harbor Space's key qualities um, have really stood out. Um, we're a university whose staff, um, character, and most importantly, our students are defined by adaptability, by perseverance, by determination, and by really being able to find solutions against the odds. So um, it's very, very symbolic that uh, we are here, perhaps not physically, um, but at least in spirit and definitely all together um, to celebrate this, um, what has been, as I said, the, uh, the end of a very challenging, but very, very rewarding year. Um, so Harvard Space's graduation ceremonies are always something a little bit special. Uh, we're a university that is defined by doing. Um, so I'm very excited to welcome our friends, our family, um, our extended family from all over space, and most importantly, our graduating students to this year's demo day and graduation ceremony. Um, so today's ceremony will, uh, will be split into two main parts. Uh, we will start with our demo day presentations where our students get to show um, how far they've come throughout the duration of this year. And it will be followed by the actual awarding of diplomas and transcripts. Um, so we're going to start with uh, our case studies, which is uh, there essentially our students have practical experience working at a company um, or examining the way a company works. <coughs> and uh, they have basically compiled a report, a short presentation, where they will be able to tell the story, tell their experience um, of how that, um, that experience affected their professional and personal development. Um, graduating students, very excited to have you with us today. I just have a couple of notes um, in order to make our presentations today run a bit smoother. Um, basically, each one of you will have five minutes to present. Um, we will try to keep to the agenda as closely as possible um, because there's a lot of us today. So um, if and when you're around the five minutes or you go over the five minute mark, um, I will just give you a gentle little nudge um, just to help you wrap up so we can stay uh, we can stay on schedule. Another thing is um, we are expecting, we know that we are a school of technology. We're a university that really prides itself on uh, being able to overcome uh, and look into the future in terms of technology, but uh, there will always be technical setbacks. So in the case that you have any kind of problems with your, uh, with your audio, with your video, or with your presentation, um, we will just give you a minute to try to take care of it. Um, and in the event that you're not able to take care of it within that minute, it's totally okay, no stress. Um, we're just going to skip to the next presentation and you will have the opportunity after that, um, after that presentation to present um, your, uh, your case study, your portfolio or your startup. So as I mentioned, we're going to be starting with our case studies, followed by our portfolios. Um, afterwards, our uh, high tech entrepreneurship students and many others will be presenting um, their startups. And uh, finally, we will end with the graduation ceremony and, of course, the graduation after party. So I'm very, very happy to have all of you with us. Welcome to Harbor Space's 2020 graduation ceremony. And very quickly, um, just to get started with our case studies, um, the first case study that we have is Azimuth by Annie Frischi and Francisca Pinto. Um, Annie and Francisca, I don't know if you can hear me. If you can hear me, uh, feel free to just give a shout out and we can get started. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, Annie, welcome. Very good to see you. Um, go ahead and start by just sharing your screen. Um, and you're going to have five minutes uh, with Francisca to present your presentation, and we'll go from there. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Yes? OK, perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. We are Azimuth, a short-term rental property management company based in Porto. So it started as an adventure as I went to Tarapoto, a small town in the Peruvian jungle for a volunteer experience, and eventually turned into a dream of creating a travel experience capable of opening the curtains so travelers can access the real show. During my experience, I had the privilege of being hosted by a local family that showed me what being a Terapotino meant. 
their traditions, frustrations, ways and tastes. And this had a true impact on me because I got to live like a local. But it hit me. This was my first immersive travel experience. And why is this when in fact 86% of millennials travel because they want to be immersed in a new culture? Available options aren't catered to millennial needs who represent 50% of travelers by 2025. Hotels offer the same old tourist maps with accommodations having a flat, flat and boring design that could be anywhere in the world and Airbnb offer very inconsistent service. So that's why we at Azimuth offer the comfort of a home with a design of adventure. So travelers get to truly indulge in the city. Through our app, we are able to offer a personalized approach. Armina, our city expert, will get to know you and create you a personalized itinerary that you can then access to exclusive experiences and see and manage it from your phone. The app also includes other key features like ordering from our range of partners so that guests have everything they need one click away. But we also listen to landlord frustrations. And after interviewing 22 landlords from Porto, we found out that they find hosting very time consuming and it becomes daunting, especially during high seasons with their full-time jobs. They want to be able to have insurance coverages, but they don't know about the available options. And they want to outsource cleaning, but they find it very difficult to find a reliable company. So that's why we created the complete package. And by being a tech company, we set ourselves apart from the competition by offer dynamic pricing, which guarantees an optimized occupancy rate for the best price, maximizing this way our clients' revenues. But how do we position ourselves against the competition? Because we have the complete package for landlords based on their needs, we compared our key features to the two biggest tech companies in this field and local competition. However, you can notice that even our biggest competitors don't have all of the features that we include, which set us apart. And we want to specifically highlight Sonder because they raised $170 million during the COVID uh, during the COVID-19 travel collapse, and they're moving to the Lisbon market, which is where we are gonna be positioned. Um, however, their properties create a flat modern design where ours reflect the local culture. Their app is only available for self-check-in and it has no inspiration, no help for where to eat or where to visit. But our app is very tailored to the guest, allowing the local concierge available 24-8. And like we said, Saunders is only available in the mature markets and we want to be in UNESCO growing tourism in uh, Europe. And of course, when we look at our guest, uh, we want to position ourselves as a seamless and authentic experience. And you can see that we really outweigh the competition, looking at the metrics that really matter to us. But how are we reaching our audience? We want to position ourselves um, in five social media platforms, but Pinterest specifically uh, and Facebook starting out because they're both B2B and B2C. And of course, Pinterest, because people go there to find inspiration and we want to find uh, local, to find guests at their zero moment of truth. And of course we have goals. So starting out, oh, and also we want to highlight the monthly visitors that we had on Pinterest and we grew from zero to 7,000 in just three weeks. And of course we have goals uh, before our launch and that includes uh, landlords, uh, growing landlords email list um, to support sales and the qualified leads. And we'll do this by having a strategy with two landing pages having lead magnets. So for example, we collaborated with experts in the field to create the report on Porto Tourism. And you can see it was a big hit by having 37 downloads in just a week organically. And of course, our second uh, goal is to grow uh, social media presence so we can really position ourselves before a launch as experts in the field. And we want to have a clear value proposition. And how we do this is by collaborating with influencers and also having a strategy with the blog to increase the backlinks and increase SEO ranking. Okay, so how do we monetize? We charge a 20% management fee to landlords. This fee is lower than our competition by 5% and with the concierge service included. Then we charge travelers a 10% commission when booking through our platform, azimuthporto.com, guaranteeing the lowest fare. And we also charge our partners a 10% commission fee for every client that they get from us, plus 1% per piece of decoration sold. And we know the market was harshly hit, seeing a 41% decrease from last year due to the pandemic. 
but people also seem to feel an even greater need for vacation despite travel restrictions. With the communal aspects of hotels making social distancing very difficult, private rentals will recover quickly. With Europe's vacation rental market having a projected market volume of 34 billion US dollars by 2025. And of course, with Porto being one of the fastest growing markets in Europe and the city where we already have expertise and no key players, that's where we plan to start. So I'm Francisca. I am Annie. And we are here to ask you for 160K to cover our initial expenses. We hopefully uh, want to start develop our app and website still this year, so that by 2021, when we start recovering from the pandemic, we can start operations with 26 properties in Porto downtown, which we own and are currently being restored with the money that we got from the funding of Portugal 2020. So you open your doors and we open you a world full of opportunities. Thank you. All right. Fantastic, Annie. Thank you, Francisca. Thank you so much, both of you. That was Azimuth, everyone. Um, we can move on to the next presentation, which is uh, Lena Drafen and Johnny M Fitness Clubs. Um, Usama, you will be following her afterwards with Cyber Range Solutions. So just, uh, just a heads up that you will be the presentation after the one that is about to follow. Okay. Um, Lena, can you hear me? Yes. Just, uh, one moment. Sure. Um, good to see you. And uh, go ahead and share your screen and get started whenever you are, whenever you're ready. Of course. Um, oh my God, I'm in Canva in presentation mode. <laughs> um, not sure. If, okay, like this. Can you see my screen? I guess we can. Okay. okay. Take it away, Lena. So um, I apologize because I have a, a new little kitten and she's playing uh, here around. So maybe if you hear something weird, it's my new cat. And <laughs> so, okay. I. Um, I'm working as a content marketing manager and, uh, in Johnny M Fitness Clubs. And my case study is about how to build an effective digital marketing strategy for a local B2C business in a highly competitive industry vertical, which is uh, for fitness, it's um, applying. So we are... Uh, middle-sized gym, uh, gym chain in Germany um, with 10 different locations in four different cities and we're placing between the high class gyms and the discount gyms uh, so we divide into different labels uh, with different prices and we also offer a women's label so um, starting uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> so cute Starting, um, starting out with uh, the, the marketing strategy, we have to think about uh, the brand itself. So I built the um, brand persona, um, which is always in mind. Um, she's a 20 year old woman. She's uh, skinny, but muscular, but not too muscular. Uh, good looking, sexy, and she always likes to wear uh, leggings and, and never, but she's never too, too sexy or cheap. And uh, she always likes style and she's an intelligent woman, um, works as a personal trainer and so on. And that's, that's the, the brand persona from which perspective um, we, we speak to our clients or potential potential members so um exactly so i did a SWOT analysis and i um looked at for example it's uh, our strength is we have uh, many really really good locations in germany so um in in stuttgart especially um where 
a whole lot of people are walking by and so on. And when they go to work, it's uh, always on their commute. So um, it's it's a it's a big strength and a weakness um, is that we have a high um, staff turnover. Um, so this is from the business side. Um, we have many opportunities, especially in content, when it's about uh, to um, uh, re retain the customers. And of course, uh, we're threatened by COVID <laughs> uh, a lot. So I split up into different marketing goals. And uh, of course, the business goal is always sales. Um, we want to get new clients and uh, especially in fitness, it's uh, you, you uh, always want those members that are never coming um, because they are not um, breaking th things or using things. So, but in marketing, we have another, we have some more goals like the, the lead generation before that or the customer retention as already mentioned and all, uh, also the sentiment because um, we uh, do due to covid and the covid politics my boss has had uh, the sentiment on our brand is not that like it used uh, like it should be so we have uh, opportunity with a content marketing strategy to grow that. And I also mapped the KPIs and uh, how to measure that. And uh, yes. So this is the vision and mission and the execution. And um, so we, uh, we have the, the mission to give everybody the gym of his desires. So that's uh, a harder part because not everyone, uh, not every staff member in our uh, company um, incorporates that, but yes. And uh, the vision uh, to break it down is to give everyone a community to belong, an atmosphere to forget their issues and the, the right equipment to achieve their goals. And stuff is also part of that. So that's uh, what should be improved a lot. And content can also help with that um, to help our staff be better at their work. And yes. So um, I looked at many, many different parts of, um, of the strategy, but it's really, really hard to break down everything into five minutes. So this is one, um, one thing I'm, it's, that's already up and running. It's our influencer marketing and we have different. So I split up in, we have a girl, she's, uh, called Pamela Reif. She, uh, she, she has 4.4 million followers on Instagram, but she's way too big and too expensive for us. And as we are a regional uh, company, it doesn't make any sense to hire her. So the same with Lee Jackson, which uh, will be um, modeling on some of our campaigns, but not hired as an influencer. But a uh, lot of the, the people like, uh, like her, like Daniela Reiser, um, are Hi, in the perfect size. Hi, Lena. I really apologize for interrupting you, but we're already a minute and a half over time. So if you want to just take 20 seconds to wrap up. Okay. okay. Sure. So last one is uh, our personas. We mapped everything. Um, so I built six personas. Uh, and... I mapped all the funnel, uh, all the content things to the different funnel stages. And at least, uh, at last but not least, 
Um, these are types of our contents. I built content clusters and I uh, have here different uh, examples of social media posts and these, uh, these printables are lead magnets or uh, linkable assets for SEO reasons and stuff. So yes, if you have any questions, Aaron, comments, <laughs> thank you. And it's really hard to put it all in five minutes. Oh my God, I completely uh underestimated thank you Anna. thank you i understand thank you so much. <laughs> sorry i'll cut you short okay i'm sure if people have questions they will reach out to you um thank you very much lena uh we'll move on to our next presenter which is maria kipriano and uh, maria will be presenting my vlm store uh, maria can you hear me yes i can perfect um, good to see you. If you want to go ahead and share your screen and then I will give you the floor and you can take it away. Of course, give me one second. All right. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. So, hey everyone. Um, I'm gonna present a marketing strategy for my family's business here in Cyprus. And it's called MyVLM. It's an online platform uh, that sells mainly uh, retail products, mainly in the fashion industry. So, um, so a little bit of like a, a brand background. Uh, MyVLM is a group of fashion, retail and hospitality brands located in Cyprus. Um, the main aim of this uh, retail platform is to um, use the more popular brands to help the, the, the smaller brands and kind of um, um, reach to their customers to promote all the different brands. Uh, we can do that by using cross-selling techniques and updated e-commerce technology. These are the brands that are included in the e-commerce platform. Marks and Spencer's is a more well-known brand, Topshop Topman, Celio, Dorothy Perkins, and some other brands. Um, I'm going to move to the objectives. So our main objectives are to increase brand awareness, uh, widen our target demographics and reach a younger audience of 25 to 40 years old and improve our online sales. Now, until now, we've had a uh, kind of older demographic, ages 40 to 65, and we really want to target um, younger people. Um, now, our strategies to accomplish our goals is to create a really strong online presence, use the social media to kind of influence people, um, appeal to younger demographics using user-generated content, um, provide a seamless online experience, um, and uh, build a loyal online customer base. I'm not going to go into the fine details of this, um, like our competitive research. So our main competitors are websites like ASOS, H&M Cyprus, Farfetch, Next, Zalando, and Amazon. And some of our indirect direct competitors are Zara, Mango, and Era. Now these three shops do not have an e-commerce shop in Cyprus right now, but this is something that we expect to happen in the near future. So I'm always keeping that in mind. Um, products and services. These brands sell similar products to us. Women's wear, men's wear, accessories, uh, kids wear, home um, furniture, um, some of their strengths and weaknesses. I'm just going to mention the most important ones is uh, strong branding. So ASOS has a really strong visual identity. Uh, they have really trendy products. They're really focusing on body, posit body positivity and uh, fast fashion, affordable clothing. So these are some of the things that are really appealing to the younger demographic. Um, now you can see competitive matrix here. So again, ASOS has uh, cheaper products than Next or Zalando. Uh, quality wise, Next has uh, better products, but it's pretty much a balance between price, quality, availability, service, and reliability. So my VLM personas, our personas, like I mentioned before, are uh, between uh, generation X and Y. So uh, generation X, um, that's probably your parents. Um, uh, Generation Y, it's uh, my age, so born in between 1918, 1994. And um, these people have uh, really kind of, well, we are acquainted with technology and we feel comfortable shopping online, at least more than um, older generations. Um, 
So Generation X uh, fall between baby boomers and millennials. They're more reluctant to um, visit an e-commerce website and shop online, but if it's easy enough for them to do so, they will. Um, for our generation, we feel more comfortable doing that. Um, however, um, we, we're always careful what we're gonna buy. We need, we're always comparing prices. We're always comparing products. So keeping aware of the competitors in online shopping is really important to us. This is some of the demographics of our main um, audience and our ideal customer persona. Uh, this is uh, not the only persona we have, but it's one that we want to focus on, which is a working mom. She's a 30 years old mom with a kids age 10 and seven. She earns an average salary and she really is doing a lot of different things every day. So she doesn't have the time to spend on um, excessive shopping or too many hours in shopping. So by having this online platform where we can give her clothing and home products and furniture, hopefully we'll be able to give her an easier and more um, uh, friendly experience. Now, uh, brand personality is really important for us to be honest, caring, uh, show commitment, people centric, uh, helpful, friendly, because we're working with people who are both in generation X and Y. So people who are not really uh, familiar as well with online shopping. So we really need to be helpful and understanding. Um, these are some of the do's and don'ts of uh, how we want to project ourselves. I'm not gonna go into the full details of this. Um, social media. Now, we, it's really important for us to build a really good relationship with our customers through social media to encourage in collaborations and shareability and trust. Um, we're going to be using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Pinterest. Um, just a little point, Pinterest, I feel is a bit of an underrated uh, social media platform here. Uh, there are a lot of moms and designers and architects who use this platform. So I think it's really useful to to utilize it. Uh, some of the content we want to work with is uh, videos, images, written articles. Um, these are kind of the more engaging content for users on social media. Uh, just examples of what we can do on each platform, videos, high-res photos, quotes, stories, infographics, step-by-step -step guides and all that. Um, okay, so this is some of the research we've done on our competitors. We feel like Instagram is a really important platform for us. Um, so for example, ASOS has like a really strong uh, colors and really strong messages behind their uh, Instagram accounts. Um, and uh, Next also is uh, working with like a lot of um, lifestyle photos, but also user generated content. So it's really important for us to do that. Uh, Zara is keeping it a bit more minimal and simple and clean. Um, and uh, yeah, there's basically a lot of kind of um, user generated content and more like lifestyle images. Okay, so these are different types of Instagram posts that we wanna uh, do. Yes. I'm really, I'm really sorry to, to interrupt you. Um, if you want to just take 20, 20 or 30 seconds just to wrap up because, sure. uh, yeah, thank you so it's much. Good, it's good to have you there to tell us. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, just to wrap up. So our Instagram is going to be used mainly for showing our products, showing different quotes, entertainment, events, etc. And um, just to show a little bit, the strategy also includes a, kind of a thorough breakdown on hashtags that we want to use based on research and our SEO for the website, um, uh, site architecture, like how we're going to uh, place every different element within the website. Uh, and finally, a digital, um, the, our data analysis through Google Analytics to see how much, how many visitors we're getting, etc. And finally, a digital campaign where we're going to basically use Google ads and Facebook ads and uh, all sorts of different promoted ads to create awareness, interest initially, and their desire and action, which is like the standard customer funnel. And um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up and just finish it here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, it's really impressive to see how much work has been put in and I wish we had more time uh, to give all of you uh, the floor to really show everything you've done. Um, so thank you very much for, for sharing with us. Our next presentation is Bananas Academy by AJ Warrior. Um, and I just want to tell Leonardo, um, Fancini and Convo to start getting ready after that. 
Um, so we have three more presentations in our case studies category, after which we will be moving to the next category of demo day presentations. Um, but for now, Bananas Academy. AJ, can you hear Hello. me? Hello, am I audible? Uh, you're very audible, yes. Uh, okay. If you want to just start by sharing your screen. Yep. Just a second, I need to turn on the audio. Yep, okay. Here okay. we go. The floor is yours, AJ. Thank you, here we go. So there's this very not so well-known poem in Hindi. It goes like, Main akela hi chala da jane be manzil. Log aate rahe aur karwan banta gaya. It roughly translates to, I was traveling alone through the journey of life and people started joining me and it became a party. I'm not here to present a case study and we can't necessarily be labeled as a, as a startup. Bananas Academy is an independent game studio that makes educational games. We are a bunch of people who have identified a problem and are working actively to try and solve it. We launched our first game, Cyber, in the month of July. It is a game that teaches the fundamentals of computer science. And here is a small sneak peek. Play as Cyber, a bunny robot. Defend yourself from enemies and traps. Complete puzzles that will teach you a new programming concept. And don't you worry, they're all designed with beginners in mind. So, what are you waiting for? Dive in to the world of Binance Academy Cyber and embrace the new era of learning. I hope the audio was there. Uh, this game, we launched it on Steam, which is a marketplace for games. And we started seeing positive revenue. We started advertising on Pinterest, after which Pinterest reached out to us and they became our marketing partner. They help us now optimize our advertisement campaigns. Following the release of the game, we were also contacted by a STEM researcher who creates syllabus for schools in New York. And he wanted to actually deploy this game into 227 schools. However, because of the pandemic, this whole thing is still up in the air. We are not necessarily a startup, but however, we had applied for the Estonia startup program and we did get selected. So they are now providing us and the team with visas to go there and act they have an active startup community. So they want, they are allowing us to go there and use their resources to grow our product. And now we are actively working on bringing mixed reality into it. When you look at education today, like we have the world where we are looking forward for self-driving cars, chips inside our brain. But when you look at education, there is really nothing that makes it exciting. So we are now working on bringing mixed reality into education. And we are trying to provide the same experience of a Microsoft HoloLens, which costs more than $1,000 for less than $20. And that is what we're trying to work on right now. And we are making very good progress every day. And I could not have done any of this without my team. They worked with me and I didn't even have to pay them. They believed in me even at times when I didn't even believe in myself. And all of this is a result of our collective work. And this whole journey was about me being obsessed with fixing the education system. And one of the most important things that I learned is that the line that divides good and evil cuts through the heart of every soul. There is no such thing as an education system. There is just people like you and me and things fail because we fail to take up the responsibility to actively make a difference, to make the right decisions every single day, even when it's not going in our favor. So the whole lesson that I learned was that these missions, like I want to fix the education system, save the planet, things like these, these are nothing more than narcissistic, our own narcissism coming into play to believing that we can actually fix the world when we should be actually focusing on fixing ourselves. And if we can actually do that, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll actually make a difference and we'll make the world a better place. And before I close off, I would just like to thank a few people other than my team. I'd like to thank my mom, who, who's probably listening to it right now, for allowing me to come to Barcelona and also my family who supported my decision. I would like to thank my professors, Stephanie Schwab, 
uh, Don Ritson and Justin Lee. They were pivotal in the in World Bananas Academies here today. And I would also like to thank the Harvest Face community and especially Mitch, Jason, um, Idelet, all the staff who provides a very, um, very positive environment, which makes you believe that anything is possible. This right here is not a full stop. It's a semicolon. In a world full of apples, go bananas. Thank you. Amazing, AJ. Um, it's really touching to see how far you've come. And we're very, very excited to see your, your progress in the future. Really well done. Thank you. Um, so we'll be following AJ's presentation with Convo by Leonardo Fancini. And we will be closing up with Juggle by Nathaniel Remy. So um, until then, uh, Leonardo, can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm having a bit of a technical issue because I cannot share my screen for some reason. I don't know because I didn't have access to the camera on the software level. But I can start talking about it while I can solve it about Convo. Okay. I think because we have uh, we just have two presentations left, Leonardo. I think yeah. would ask perhaps if Nathaniel is ready to present, and then you can wrap up the section. Um, once you once you've uh, fixed the technical issue, so you'll have five more minutes just to make sure it's running smoothly. Yeah, or I, as you want, because I can send you my the recordings that I did for the demo as as you wish. I mean, okay. If I can call it. I'll try now if you want. If okay. you want to travel first, share your screen, Leonardo, right now. And if that doesn't work, we can move to Nathaniel's presentation and have you at the end. Yeah, and mine doesn't work right now sharing the screen. So okay. Then uh, Leo will have you right after Nathaniel and uh, and juggle, and we'll have you wrap up the section. In, okay, uh, perfect. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. No, no, no. Leo, it's all to be expected. Um, Nathaniel, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Very clear. Awesome. Uh, so Nathaniel Rami will be presenting juggle in our penultimate presentation of uh, the case study section. Um, Nathaniel, if you want to go ahead. All right, I see you're already up there. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, the floor is yours, Nathaniel, take it away. Okay, well, hello everybody. My name is Nathaniel Remy <clears throat> and I'm graduating my computer science bachelor degree here at Hyperspace. And I want to present my startup capstone project called Juggle. And what we do at Juggle is we help you save your time and save your money by connecting you to the right professional for any job or task that you may need accomplished. And we do all of this by working around your budget and your schedule. Now, before I get started, I want to introduce everybody to my friend, Monica. And Monica lives in Barcelona. She's a single mother. And as a side hustle, she has a flat on Airbnb and she wants to have a walkthrough video of this flat to attract more lovely tenants. But the problem, the problem here is that she doesn't have any experience making video, she has no equipment, and she can't afford an agency professional. So what does she do? Now also meet my friend Benjamin. Benjamin is, uh, has recently moved here. He's an expat in Barcelona, and he needs to move from one side of the city to the other, but his only way of transportation is public, bike or foot, and he doesn't have any friends with a car. But at the same time, he needs to move his big mattress and his big bed frame with him. So what is he going to do? So this is our solution. It's based off of these three main principles where, for one, we're a cross-platform application where users can post any job or task they need done. Uh, you get connected to a professional that's in your area with the correct skills, and we work around the end user's own budget and their own schedule. So these are screenshots from our application that is available for download. And so this is, okay, for, as an example, let's take the example of Monica. Monica needs a video of her flat. So she would come to this section of the app by clicking at the bottom tab on the plus, and she would click the category she needs her task, photo video, enter a title, enter a description. How long does she think it will take for somebody to video her flat? What is her budget and her address? Also, if you are not comfortable sharing an address, you can say, okay, this can be done online or through phone. And then once you're done with this step, your task is now posted. And once you receive either a message or an offer from somebody else in the app, it will, you will be notified here. 
and you can keep the conversation going and work out all the details through here. So we are going, we're launching, we're launching now in Spain um, before any, anywhere else. And these are our main competitors in Spain. But the real, these uh, five yield job in clean do that's Kia's ask are out of business now actually. And there's TaskRabbit, which has been bought by IKEA in 2017 for 500 million, which um, they have just came to Barcelona actually within the last couple of months. But there is one big difference between uh, Juggle and all the rest of the competitors, which is that we're not an agency. So we're very, we're not, the thing is, so take, for example, when you work with a, a normal agency and you need somebody to come clean your flat, you pick up the phone, you say, hey, I need somebody to come around this time and it's gonna take around three hours. And then they get back to you, they say, okay, we'll send a person, blah, 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 this is the price, et cetera, right? So what these other companies did is they just digitalized that process while with us, we're a marketplace. So that is the dif differentiator. Um, our business model for now is to take a commission. So through uh, Stripe, which is a payment processing system implemented in the app, once a task gets done, um, the payment goes through and we take a 15% commission, but this commission is not, is not a surplus. It's not on top for the end user getting the task done, but it gets taken away from the person doing the actual work. And we have a bunch of other ideas for uh, future, I guess, business models and growth models that are listed here below. Almost out of time, so I will keep going. And what we have today is we have an iOS app um, with around, which has just under 15 initial users on it. We have a website and 150 emails of people interested. That's where we are today. And in Q4 2020, we'll be launching on web and Android and then growing our platform from there and expanding into other cities and potentially countries. And here is me and my teammate. Thank you very much, everybody. That's everything. Okay. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. I also remember Juggle uh, throughout your time at Harbor Space, and it's, it's very exciting to see how far it's come. Best of luck for the future with that. Um, our final presentation will be uh, Leonardo Fancini with Combo. Uh, he's managed to solve his technical issues. So we can wrap up the study section with that. Uh, Leo, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Perfect. Okay, try sharing your screen now, um, and let's see if we can uh, wrap this up. Yeah. Okay, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, no? Yeah, we can. So first, uh, before showing the demo, I'll talk about Combo. First of all, why did this idea came to mind? What's, what's the idea of um, Combo? Why there are many competitors to Combo and why we differentiate, differentiate from them? So the idea is of a chat up conversation where would be just without records, like a normal voice to voice conversation that you would have with a friend where there are no le records left. It's just by memory, like, oh, you remember you said something. Oh, it may be true, maybe not. You know, memory doesn't work that well as computers do. So the idea is actually to don't spy on people, don't overuse also servers and don't uh, harvest uh, user data to sell to others. And so the idea would be to send um, like a messaging app, but it will work like as soon as the other person saw it, after 30 seconds, it would be, the message would disappear. And why 30 seconds? Because and why it's obligatory this is because there are competitors like telegram signal and others that do have options to set a time limiter and everything but it's always optional users as i saw over the years they don't care that much about this and to go through the settings and set up this and that so our app does it automatically it does it all for you you just worry about chatting with your friends and we do all the rest on the back end. The idea also is to have uh, all of this uh, controlled on our server and nothing on the app because 
the deletion would be just uh, done in the server. So we wouldn't have any records. And also we wouldn't be able to spy on you because it's end-to-end -end encryption. So that's the idea. And uh, here it's a short demo. Uh, also one other thing, one main thing, it's that uh, it's, uh, it's developed in Flutter and Dart. I mean, coding language is Dart, but it's uh, Flutter SDK. And the nice thing is one code base for both uh, Android and iPhone. And with that, I'm using also Firebase. I know what might come to mind that Google is as the big brother they are, they're spying on you and everything. But the good thing is, so it's end-to-end -end encryption. Not even me can read the messages. I mean, on the debugging level and everything, yes. But uh, when it's deployed, I'll never be able to read any of your messages uh, as uh, owner of the app and nobody else. So here is a short demo of the app running on iPhone and Android, uh, sending some short messages on iPhone. Think that it's an older model of iPhone. So it's a 4S. It's not screen optimized for it like a 11 S. I don't know what iPhone they are on. So here we can see that we have sign in and sign up options. On the iPhone, I'm signing up for a new account. And on the Android, I'm, I'm gonna sign in. Also for now, the privacy and conditions are non-existent. Also here I'm showing that there are other user, users active for now. I'm now using the Android app for, to showing it works. And please never use this kind of passwords because one is password and the other is secret. Don't do that. So here you can see on the iPhone part, it's sending me a message. As it shows, it's not read. And as soon as it's read, as you can see, it's out of sync, I'm sorry. But it's going to start the timing on the server. And in around 30 seconds, that I'm going to skip a bit, uh, it's going to be deleted because we had time to read it and we have now 30 seconds. To go back, here the messaging is not there, it doesn't exist anymore. And this is for every message and as I said, the idea is, uh, sorry, the idea is mainly to, to have something that is a, like a normal conversation, not like Zoom, but like a person-to-person -person conversation without any drugs and without worrying what you said. So that's it, that's Convo, and that's all. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Leo. Super cool to see as well, the development of your, of your project. So uh, that wraps up um, our case studies section. Um, we will be taking a very, very short intermission um, and we will come back at 3 p.m. CET for, uh, to start our portfolios. Our first um, portfolio presenter is Javier Rebolledo and uh, we will go from there. So very, very short break for everyone to, to get some water and prepare for our amazing design portfolios. See you soon.
All right. So as we're getting ready to welcome our first uh, speaker, I want to welcome everyone back, first of all, from our first short intermission. And uh, welcome to the design portfolios um, section of our, of our demo days. So for a designer, uh, the portfolio is their bio. It is their, their manuscript. Their, it is essentially a, uh, a handheld copy of their philosophy, and it expresses who they are. And in our students' case, it really shows how far they've come. So um, I'm very excited to, to give the stage to our interaction design students as they show off some of their, um, some of them will be showing entire portfolios. Others will be showing um, projects that they've been working on, just showing highlights of their portfolios um, from projects that they've been working on throughout the year. Um, I see our first presenter is already ready. Um, Javier, can you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, well, Javier, uh, thank you so much for being prepared and uh, very excited to see you kick off our uh, design portfolios section of the, of the demo days. So uh, as long as I can, well, I can see your screen, great. So whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. All right. So as you mentioned, I won't be presenting a portfolio. I'm just gonna present a, a, quick, case a quick case study of a project that I got to, to design while studying here in, in Harvard Space. And it was, it's actually, it was for Harvard Space. <laughs> so this is called the academic portal. I'm just gonna do a quick case study. And what the, what the portal is, is a, it's a tool that helps us manage uh, most of the back-facing processes that happen within Harvard Space. And what I mean by this is that uh, right now, Harvard Space is building a lot of digital products. Some of them have not uh, been released but throughout this portal, it's how we're actually gonna uh, manage most of the of the processes that are gonna are gonna be happening on the on the backstage. And some of those processes are for the for the staff or for the teachers. Uh, for the teachers, I mean for the staff, we're gonna create and manage uh, programs. And this is like the the actual master's degrees or the the bachelors. We're going to coordinate on everything that has to do with implementing the, the courses. That's like from planning the time, the schedule, to actually like bringing the teachers over and executing the, the class, uh, collaborating with teachers. And for the teachers, we the teachers are going to be able to find their uh, respective teaching opportunities. They're going to be able to manage their trip here to Barcelona. And also, uh, like, give the the grades and the attendance and manage every, like the activities that have to do with the with the classes that they're giving. Uh, I'm just I just want to quickly touch the, the the ecosystem map and the the scope of the of the project. Oh, I think I have a bit of lag, but okay, that's fine. Um, so this is just a, a small map of of the the products that we oh it's moving okay of the products that Harvard Space is ambitioning uh, we have uh, we have a uh, the academic portal on the bottom then we have uh, connect which is a, another uh, application that is not yet released we have the website we have a student app that's coming that's coming soon and then up top we have help and the test and the testing platform that has been recently renamed to leaks of code uh, which is actually going to launch pretty soon. And basically what the academic portal is going to do is help us manage like uh, this uh, growing and uh, this growing ecosystem. So quickly, I, I just want to jump into some of the funny things that happened throughout the project. W when I was invited to, to join the project, we, it was already ongoing. So there were like uh, some decisions that had already been made. <laughs> well, before I joined, and some of those decisions were uh, that we were going to be using a, a design language that is called Ant Design Language, uh, <laughs> and it's like it's the design language that Alibaba, Alibaba uses. Uh, it was uh, an overwhelming experience, I must say. Like it has some English documentation, but most of the of the actual applications are in Chinese. So when I joined. And our uh, Ricardo Mendieta sent me like the documentation and he was like, okay, yeah, like take a look. I was looking at this. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck is this? Like, what did I get into? 
but in time I got to to know the documentation better and we found like some some pretty interesting uh, design files that actually helped the the design process of, of this portal uh, a lot. Uh, what what we found was like the whole design language already in Figma. So th this allowed the, the whole team to actually, we went, we were able to just go from really low-fi wireframing to almost uh, high-fi production ready handoff for, for developers really, really, really quickly. So th this helped us like move in a really agile manner. That, that was nice. Uh, and I, I'm just gonna quickly go over some, some screens of uh, how it ended up uh, looking. First, we're gonna go over the, the teacher side of the portal. I, I, I'm not really gonna go over the, the details of uh, every part. It's just like uh, showing how it's shaping up. Obviously it's a, it's a work in progress because the, the scope of this is super, super big. So this is our, our, in October, we're gonna be releasing the, the first version, uh, which is just like the, the initial scope. Uh, this is uh, the teacher sign up, uh, which uh, for the teachers, we had to take a really simple approach to how we were like designing the interactions. We don't want, we didn't want to overwhelm them with the, uh, the amount of things that we needed to, to get from them, even though on some cases, uh, there were like uh, a lot of things that we're asking from them. Uh, this is just a, a teacher profile The teachers are gonna, are gonna have to fill. The, uh, by this, they're gonna allow us to to actually plan out the, the academic year better and finding teachers who, for example, are within Europe now. The 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 whole pandemic thing is going, and and we can actually like bring teachers to give uh, classes. Uh, this is like the just how the the profile looks. Uh, this is how initially they're going to set up the every every course that they're gonna that they're, they're gonna give. Uh, they're gonna give us the syllabus. They have to sign a teacher agreement. Uh, the whole thing, like the whole process of coming to Barcelona, is gonna be handled through here. Uh, and next, uh, this is like the back facing part of the of the platform. This is meant for Harvest Space stuff. We have uh, different users. But obviously, for the back facing side, this was like a whole, like a completely different approach. We had to go like much more in depth on how much uh, functions we were offering, and obviously also the, like the the density of the information that we we were showing. This is just uh, some uh, quick examples. This is uh, the the teacher profile, how the the Harvard space staff looks at it. Uh, this is a, a course concepts uh, catalog. This is how we're gonna manage like the, the courses that we're giving. I, I don't wanna go into details because uh, it took me a cup of liters of coffee to, to understand. Yeah, I'm very, hi, yeah. I'm really sorry to interrupt you. We're running a bit over time. So okay, if okay. you okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to, to cut you off, first of all, because I know how, firsthand how hard you worked. Um, and uh, so thank you so much yeah. for, uh, representing the academic portal. We're really looking forward uh, to having it soon. Um, next up, we have uh, another one of our interaction design students and another member of uh, the Harbor Space team, one of the newest members of the team. Uh, Sonia Kuo will be presenting um, her portfolio. So uh, Sonia, if you, perfect. I see you already have your screen up. Can you hear me? Okay, sound check. Uh, sound check complete, Roger. Uh, okay, I'm going to start. Hi, everyone. I'm Sonia. I'm originally from the US and Taiwan. And uh, like some of my classmates here, I came to Harbor Space with zero design experience. So this year has been, you know, a wild journey of growth, discovery, and figuring out what it means to me to, to be a designer. So I'm going to walk you through some of what I've learned over the year. Um, so as you can see, this is my portfolio, pretty clean and simple. Um, below, you'll see a selection of some of the projects I worked on over the year, a lot with uh, my classmates here on this call as well, and as well as the section that just tells you a little bit more about my background and the way I work. Um, so I try to structure all my projects in kind of a similar way. So if we just check out one of these, which is actually one I worked on with Javier, who you just heard, and uh, Renew also. And it was for our nine week class with Irene. Um, but you'll see that each project kind of starts with this, uh, this context page um, that tells you about the brief, the timeline, um, breaks it down into sections and 
you're able to jump into a section if you want to if you're interested in a specific part of the process um but yeah as a as a ux focused designer it's super important to me to uh, be really clear about um, the process and the rationale that I had throughout a project. Um, so, you know, it's not just kind of a list of progress snapshots, even though they, they are here as well, but that it's all tied into a story that tells you about the challenges, the breakthroughs that we had, um, so that readers can really get a sense of how I think and work and um, maybe even learn something from it too. But honestly, um, that's enough of that. This is all live if anyone wants to go check it out, but I'll actually take the next two minutes and um, introduce a project that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks uh, for Harbor Space as well, um, just because I think it's a little more interesting. Um, and that would be the application process, which is, I think, something that a lot of us can relate to because a lot of us on this call had to apply to Harbor Space at one point in time. But um, basically how this project started was uh, we have these work study um, scholarships that we're starting to offer more and more, and we wanted to design uh, a separate application process for that. But in the process of kind of figuring out how we we're going to do that, we realized that there was a lot that we needed to maybe rethink about the way the application process was originally designed um, and that maybe it wasn't really optimized anymore uh, for the way that students want to apply to a university, um, but also that uh, it was set up in a way that was starting to hinder the processes for the admissions team. Um, and creating a lot of manual labor and uh, even inconsistency on the back end. So this required, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a, this might be overwhelming to look at, but it's all this to just say that it was uh, it was re-examining the process as a whole. Um, so starting with you know interviewing some of the past students who've applied um, and the admissions team to figure out where the uh, friction points were, um, and also thinking about the journeys in general of anyone who applies to a school or a company, um, and also the admissions and the recruitment teams on the other side. So, and then taking those insights and um, recently, this was something that I was grappling a lot with, uh, but just creating the whole flow of the admissions process. So this might look complicated, but what it really is, is just explaining all the actions that an applicant is taking, um, as well as our touch points with them, whether that's on the website, through email or through video call, uh, all the things that the admissions team is responsible for, interacting with the applicant and on the back end, and of course, the supporting tech and the processes that goes behind that. So <laughs> this is a really key um, step to just get the whole team aligned and what we should be working towards, not just in the online application itself, but um, in all the processes online and offline that are happening and how they have to come together and work together. So all this before getting to even designing the wireframes, which is where I'm at now. And we can take a quick look at uh, what it's looking like. But yeah, it's really just trying to design the application in a way that feels a little more intuitive, maybe a little more trustworthy for the student, um, but also helps our team collect all the information that they need uh, at the right time and in the right way. Um, so, you know, like how we would now indicate whichever scholarship we're applying to. Um, and you can see that the way we're asking about people's education, their experience or the skills, it's, it's in a standardized way to try and level the playing field so we don't run into the thing where we have like hundreds of very different looking CVs that the team has to be manually sorting through. Um, and even how um, we ask for supporting documents, for example, like the transcript or the references uh, later on in the process rather than in the beginning because not everyone has those documents on hand. So this has been a really exciting challenge for me to take on, especially because you know, not too long ago, I was, uh, I was, you know, halfway across the world and, sorry, it froze. Um, I was halfway around the world, you know, new to Harbor Space and applying as a student for the first time. So I'll just wrap up to say that, um, yeah, there were definitely points throughout the year where I um, doubted whether I was cut out for design. Um, but while this is really only the beginning of my journey, it's, um, it's, uh, Definitely, I, I feel proud of uh, the conviction I've developed as a designer and um, and I am really thankful for all the people who have supported and helped and taught me along the way. So thank you and congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, so awesome to see how far you've come and very, very excited to be working with you in the future. Um, our next presenter is one of our bachelor's students for interaction design. Uh, Olivia Engelart will be presenting um, her design portfolio or design project. 
Um, Olivia, I see you already have your screen up. Can you hear me? Want to do a little sound check? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, I can hear you really well, Oli. Um, so very, very happy to, to see you present. Best of luck. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Olivia. And as Jason mentioned, I'm graduating as a bachelor student uh, in interaction design. And throughout the last three years at Harvestface, I've learned a lot. Um, and especially in four disciplines that I wanted to showcase on my portfolio. The obvious one is, of course, interaction design. Um, but then I also had a lot of classes in motion design, which I really enjoyed. And illustration, I taught myself alongside my studies. Um, and the fourth one is coding. I completed a couple of courses in web development uh, throughout my years. Um, and because um, I was, uh, I didn't really, I couldn't really work with other website builders um, to really create what I wanted to do with my portfolio. I just tried doing it, uh, coding it myself, and it was really difficult, but um, I'm really glad that I did it. And um, yeah. So here on one page, you can, on the left, you can just read a little bit about me. You can um, contact me. Um, and on the right, you can see the different disciplines that I wanted to show. Now, if we, we'll just have a quick um, walkthrough. Um, if you go into illustration, you can tap on different um, um, titles to see um, some of the different illustrations that I've done over my last three years at the university. And if we just jump into motion design, um, we had two really great motion design teachers. Um, this project I did with Daniel Savage, uh, which was really, um, it, it was so much fun. Um, so yeah. And this is another project that I did with uh, Pochanchia. And there's a couple of other ones that um, were more about um, interaction, the motion and interaction. So, yeah. And the last one is interaction design, where I've, um, you can see three different case studies, two of uh, which I completed during my three years at Harbor Space and one that was a client project. Um, and we can just quickly look through it. So in each of these case studies, in the beginning, you can always see um, a little bit of intro information, um, like what the, what the project is about and how long it was. And then it just goes into the brief and then into the discovery, the research part of all of it and then later into the wireframes and how we actually were able to complete and uh, complete the project. And yeah, this is true for all three different um, case studies. So yeah, I really, I really enjoyed um, my three years at Harbor Space and I really wanna thank so many people that have been with me throughout the past three years. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for the future to keep improving um, on my work and keep, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Um, if you wanna look more throughout the website, um, it's called Olivia, three O's. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Olivia. Um, congratulations on a super, super cool. Um, yeah, end of, end of three years. I'm very excited to see where you will go from here. Um, our next presenter is uh, Francisca Mora, who will also be presenting her, uh, her progress um, during her year as an interaction designer. Francisca, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you Perfect. hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you very well. And I can also see your portfolio. So uh, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Okay, awesome. So, hi everyone. My name is Francisca and I came from Portugal. Uh, in Portugal, I finished my bachelor in journalism, which is pretty interesting uh, since I'm here studying design. Even thought I came to Harbor Space knowing that I love to do something in the interaction design world, uh, but not sure where my passion and skills would lie on. 
uh, I got to sneak peek in this whole world of spectrum of areas in harbor space, like development and concepting, advertising, animation, UX and UI. And we even learned how to design for smart TVs. Um, and in the beginning, I was really confused about what I wanted. And I think my classmates can <laughs> confirm that constant confusion. Um, but now that this year is done, I'm happy to say that I feel more defined as a designer and the fields that I absolutely love to work uh, on during this year was UI and UX design, web design and branding. And so I'm happy to show you three of my selected projects real quick. Uh, so I'll start with Umana, uh, where the brief was to create a new concept, uh, brand identity and art direction for an online publication website. Uh, we had the freedom to choose the topic. And like nowadays, women's empowerment is such a huge topic, impossible to ignore. I thought it would be a good opportunity to create a digital publication that will write about special women and their impact around the world. So that's how Umana was created. And here's the homepage and I'll scroll quickly through it. Uh, it was intended to give this new brand the personality of these women uh, to make it bold and sassy, elegant and sof sophisticated, but still keeping the human touch. So the big first section is the most recent articles. This middle one would be the most popular ones. The photography, it's always black and white uh, with the only accent color of uh, orange. The typography choice keeps the assertive and impactful tone. Here in the bottom on the page, we have the interactive documentaries that I'm going to show up front and the footer. And for the article page, we had to develop a, a home page and an article page. Uh, these pieces needed to be constantly uh, updated by editors. So the components were created for text and for images, videos, and other dynamic content uh, that might be needed. And so here's a little sample of how these articles will look on a mobile version. And finally, the interactive documentary was part of, part of the scope too. It was unlike the regular articles that I just shown, uh, these are built around its own content. So it's made to provide a much more interactive experience for the user. Uh, here is one example. We picked an article. In my case, it's the 12th of the most uh, famous women in history. And I'll guide you through the interaction. So on scroll, the photographs of these women will appear and hovering with the mouse. In one of these, uh, it will reveal more information. And clicking, you have a page for each woman. Um, from left to right, you can see how uh, the horizontal scroll would flow. And it starts with a quote, then a picture of the introduction, and then all the information with some interactive elements. And so this is it for Humana. The next steps would be to bring this interaction into life. Uh, my, the second one that I want to present is Proxim. The brief was to design a digital experience that complements and improves the existing public transportation services in Barcelona. For those who know, it's TMB. Uh, this one was made in collaboration with this wonderful team here. It was with Javier, Dani, and Sonia. Uh, and through user research, there were two pain points that we found to be the most compelling. It was crowded buses and metros, which represent a concern, especially now with times of COVID, and the lack of real-time information about the user's upcoming ride. So Proxim allows the user to have access to real-time information about the upcoming trains and metros to give the riders a smooth and safer journey. Proxim is an app that uses your location, uh, or you can add your location manually, and so the user uh, has the possibility of seeing information displayed on augmented reality, uh, showing the location of the doors of the wagons and the capacity of each wagon, as well as, as other details. The user also can expand the card and see a non-AR view. Uh, it's possible to see the metro arriving in two minutes and scrolling up, you can see the upcoming ones that will appear. In this view, the user can see which wagons are emptier, as well as which ones could accommodate bikes or wheelchairs. And so, in conclusion, like when millions of people now rely on public transit every day, details make a big difference. And that was our purpose. It's to see, to have this notion of how crowded the next metro is, and if there's an emptier incoming, uh, which wagon we want, where to stay. And these details, um, tell us what to expect and how to make the best out of the journey, especially now with the times of COVID. And so my last uh, project that I want to, to talk about to you guys is a side project of mine that I also enjoyed a lot doing, um, introducing the company to for the company that I worked for, it's Barkin, that solves all dog owner problems 
with an innovative one-stop shop subscription of customized food, surprises, and a dedicated online veterinarian. And so recently, Barkin's business model took a 180 shift in, his in the business model, having started with like being a simple curator of products to having its own private level. And so to create a new design identity for Barkin's private level and overall the experience flows uh, to strengthen this connection with the customers and make it reflect the personalization and the detail and craft put into products, uh, the concept was to create an hyper-personalized experience in both offline and online to ensure a familiar and trustful environment. This approach involves a new design system for the packaging, content strategy, new thoughtful subscription flows, and customized surprises. So from the online order uh, to the unboxing experience, everything works to engage the customers with the brand and on a deeper level. This new packaging is personalized to each dog, full of little design details specially specialized for uh, each customer, following this playful and cheerful design line with never losing the medical and trustable uh, tone. And this project was very special for me because since it was actually implemented and had a high success rate, even being Varkin distinguished as the most innovative pet care business in Europe recently. And so that's all for me. Thank you so much for listening. And a final big thank you to my classmates who ended up being the core of this whole experience and the ones who, with whom I learned the most. Thank you so much. Thank you, Francisca. Uh, real pleasure to see all of your work. Um, we'll be following this presentation with a, uh, another one of our students who has a more technical background, but uh, became a designer throughout the year, uh, Ankit Karnani. Uh, Ankit, can you, can you hear me? Okay, I think you're on mute. Uh, yes. Let's try again. Let's, can you hear me now? Okay, should we try one last time? I can't hear Jason. Okay. 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 Can Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Hear you perfectly. Oh, yeah. Let me share my screen. Okay. Um, can you try sharing your screen? Yes, I'm doing that. What's up? Security. What does it Sorry for this. Not at all. Thank you. I will tell. You guys are looking very stylish. Thank you, Jason. I'm sharing now. Sorry. No problem. Yeah. Can you see my can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen and it looks beautiful. Uh -huh. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. So hello everyone. I'm Ankit from India. So let me tell you about myself. Like I'm uh, what my background is, I before coming here, I was I graduated as a chemical engineer, and I decided to learn coding. So I spent like two or three years learning coding, and it was all self-taught. And I worked for a few other few companies to gain experience with them. And at the end of all the experience, I decided to learn design because I got really interested into the front the UI part of applications. So I decided to come for masters in Harbor space. And so far the experience has been like the, this, to be honest, this year was my best year ever <laughs> because of all the people around me, like the, my classmates, my teachers, Harbor space in general, it's really good. And I would like to share what I built for my case, uh, for my portfolio. So as you can see, sorry, in my homepage, I, since I'm like a super colorful person, my portfolio is all filled with colors. 
and I decided to go with this grid design because I have only three pages, three case studies and one about me page. So let's go to about me and here I have the general information about me where you can see my, exp my expertise, testimonials and all the work experience I have. And let me show one of my case studies, which I'm really proud of. This case study was done with uh, my amazing team, Javier and Kika. And this was one of the best moments I had in Harbor Space when I was working on this. So it was about a marketing strategy creating for Tesla. So we ended up design, we ended up doing the whole research and the mentor was of course, Ricardo Mendieta. And we ended up doing all the research. We went to the Tesla showrooms, experienced the whole dashboard. And as you can see, we had a lot of fun doing that. And at the end, we decided to build like a prototype of uh, um, a dashboard with a music visualizer and an Arduino connected a 3D model of Tesla with LEDs and which dances based on the music which it's which is playing in the can in the uh, decks in the dashboard. So it was it was really good and fun and. If you can, if you want to look at the prototype, you can go to my website, which is my full name.com and slash Tesla, and you can play the prototype. And yeah, this is my portfolio. And in, in general, I'm really proud of what I have learned so far here. And yeah, it's, it's been a really good journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ankit. Uh, very, very impressive work and best wishes for the future. Uh, next up, we have uh, another one of the interaction design students who has also joined the, the Harbor Space team. I'm uh, very excited to be working with Daniela Ivan, who is also sharing um, some of the work that she's done over the years. Uh, and what I, can, I can hear you a bit of echo. echo. Sorry, Jason, is that better? Uh, it's much better. <laughs> Thank you. Let me share my screen for a minute. And could you please let me know if you can see it already? Yes, we can see it. That's great. Yes, so hi everyone. Welcome to my portfolio. As you can see, this is just an introduction um, of what I do. I'm a service designer currently based in Barcelona and I help businesses concept, design and build new products and services through a human-centered approach. These are some of the things that I do best. And these are, these are some of the brands that I've worked with in the past. And as you can see, I have here a compilation of my work and the projects that I've been working um, in the past year here at Harbor Space. Um, I wanna be as brief as I can. So I'm just gonna walk you through one of my case studies, which is my Bulu case study. And for this project, we were given a brief to design an experience that could help everyone who had to transition to a sudden rate, uh, to a sudden state of remote work. So my role for this project was as project manager and, and as an experienced designer. And for all of my case studies, I always structure them in a very similar way, starting with the context. So the context, the context here was uh, that we were naive to think that remote work wasn't inevitable when we had a, the tipping point, which was COVID, it accelerated the sudden transition from physical offices to fully working from our homes. And even though some companies were prepared for this shift, others were forced into this transition. And this is why our challenge was to identify the opportunities that support what people are going through and to design an experience that would help them through their transition of working entirely remotely. So, we started uh, basically redefining our problem from scratch. And we stumbled through a couple of breakdowns, looking through a lot of articles and studies on the pandemic and remote work. And we finally took some takeaways through our secondary research. We were able to interview six people with very different backgrounds who shared their experience transitioning from a physical to a fully remote space. And from there, we started looking for patterns 
And uh, we arrived to a total of 40 insights that we analyzed further. And after 35 cups of coffee, we were able to condense these into our opportunity statements. So this is what our primary research looked like. These are some images of the workspaces of the people that we interviewed. And this process helped us understand the positive and the negative impacts of un and unintended consequences around the areas of workspace, team dynamics, company dynamics, and personal space. So these were some of the insights that we extracted from our research. And from there, we arrived to our opportunity statement, which was how might we create a different relationship with time when working remotely? So we, our process was, was pretty large. Uh, we started with stakeholder mapping, uh, our desktop research, our user interviews, starting all of the pat uh, finding all of the patterns and common themes in between, um, designing our experience blueprints and our customer journeys, and finally starting building um, our prototype. And we finally arrived to our solution, with, which was Bulu an interactive device that enables you to engage with time while working from your home. If you can see and grab your time, then you become intentional about how you're spending it. So from work meetings to yoga sessions, Bulu helps you keep your focus on any task or activity that you need to do. These are some of our design experience design principles, which are that we perceive time differently, we delight in the small tasks, and we are playful at heart. And we did a, a fun tutorial on how to use the product. These are some of the animations that we, that we did. I am not going to go in deep uh, through all of the steps here, but in the end, Hulu is an outlet of emotions. Uh, we know that your mood can influence your attitude when starting a new task. And that's why Bulu is designed for you to play with and to keep you free of stress through your day. Bulu celebrates with you when you finish a task in time and it gets super excited um, when you hold it and bounce it or throw it in the air. And it can even get a little impatient when you leave it paused for too long during a task that you haven't completed yet. So what would a day of your life would look like with Bulu? Um, let's say that you have a meeting starting in five minutes. So Bulu knows how frustrating these can be for you. So in that moment, Bulu turns red and frowns to encourage you to give it a squeeze so you can release some tension and focus on being your best self throughout your meeting. Now let's say that you have a yoga routine coming up. So because your Bulu knows, uh, knows that you'll need a calm state of mind, then it will mute all of your notifications to keep your distractions away. And it will also play the most relaxing, your most relaxing uh, Spotify playlist uh, and display your time descending through tones of blue in a soothing manner throughout slow rhythms. So in the end, Bulu is here to help you engage with time in a new way. And it's not about keeping you focused on what you're doing, but about becoming intentional on how you're relating with the time that you have at hand, literally. And this is, this is it, this is my case study. If you wanna take uh, another look at my projects, you can just go to danny-guevara.com. And thank you very much. Thank you, Danny. Um, very awesome project and excited to be working with you as well in the future. Um, our next up, we have uh, Federico, who will be presenting one of the projects that he's done um, throughout this year. And next up after him, we have Renu and Yasha, who will be presenting together. But first, Federico Giroto. Uh, Federico, can you hear me? Yes. You hear me? Yes, I hear you very well. Perfect. Uh, if you want to, yeah, we see your screen very clearly. So anytime you're ready, you can go ahead and get started. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Federico, designer and filmmaker. Um, today I'm going to explain and to show you my portfolio, starting from the works I did for my clients. And I'm moving on my favorite category, that is my personal projects, with a focus on one project. Uh, I can consider uh, myself as a full stack designer because I've always loved to try and to experiment every field of design, starting from photography, video, uh, UX, UI. So uh, here in the presentation, you can see uh, work from different types uh, of fields. Starting from the work I did, uh, this is a company of beverage uh, in Italy, and they asked to uh, make an interaction uh, installation for an event for their employees. 
and it consists on catching the movements with a Kinect sensor of the people and projecting uh, these shapes uh, uh, behind them. World Rise is an NGO uh, in Italy uh, which work uh, to promote uh, the conservation and safeguard of marine environments uh, through a series of projects. And for them, I did the, um, the brand identity, but even I made uh, three or four uh, videos to promote their projects. Then we have another client that is a fashion client. And I did the video for this uh, event. They organized the first uh, Green Week in Milan, and I had them to promote this with a video. And then Atika Murina is a Venetian brand, and they build uh, lamps and products from handcraft um, glass. And they launched this new product uh, internationally. So they asked me to release this video. And if you go inside of one of each one of these categories, you can see all the project and all the details and how was the process of this. Now, my favorite category, personal project. Uh, I want to focus, as I promised, on Houses of Barcelona. Uh, so this is consists on um, a video, a time-lapse video with all the numbers of uh, the houses in, uh, I took in Barceloneta. I focus in Barceloneta because it's a neighborhood uh, different from the rest of the city because it has uh, his own style, his own uh, time. It's something different from the rest part uh, of, uh, of the city center of Barcelona. And it's interesting to know that Barceloneta um, until the 18th century was empty. And then the first fishermen uh, starts coming and building their houses. And even other people later on um, to build their houses and places uh, because they work on the port. So what we can see here in Barceloneta is that there is something really characteristic. Uh, we can see uh, the styles of the people even starting from the houses and from the numbers of the houses. Uh, one day I took my camera, I went outside in Barceloneta and I took 100 pictures of the numbers of the houses and then I made a time lapse and this really tell the stories of people which live inside. I'm sharing with you the video. And the idea is to move and use this concept even for other city than in the future. Then moving to other personal project, uh, this is from Harbor Space. So I did a, a design, graphic design movement from, inter, from uh, the audio. Then Line is a personal project I did, it was a public installation where people could uh, move in front of this wall of lines and lines move with the movements of people and even people could change the colors and the thickness of these lines. Then this is a project from Harbor Space. Ten Things is a platform where uh, that tells uh, stories of travels and people uh, with a focus on uh, interaction and design. Funny Pack, which is a user experience uh, uh, app uh, we design in group at Harbor Space. It consists on an app that collects uh, all the documents uh, the backpackers need for their travels. And finally, I mean, which is an experiment I did, it's a 3D reactive, sound reactive uh, um, shape. So I really hope you enjoy the presentation, the portfolio. I'm open to collaborate if someone you want to do it even in the future. And um, thank you so much for, for this year. And I really really thankful for everything and for you guys. Perfect. Federico, thank you so much. Thank um, you. It's very impressive to see the wide range of uh, design and creative skills you have. So very excited to see what you're going to do in the future. Um, next up, we have a collaborative presentation between two interaction design students. Benio uh, and Yasha will be presenting together. Um, can we do a sound check with both of you just to make sure I can hear both of you and we'll go from there. Hello. Hi. Okay, I think that's uh, those two voices I heard. So I can already see you're sharing your screen. Yes. Perfect. Um, whenever you guys are ready, um, take it away. Hello everyone. Um, that's me, Yasha, along with Renu. The two of us are going to uh, discuss one of the projects that we did with Harper Space. Uh, it's called Blind Square. 
Um, she was mostly the service designer and I was like the UX researcher in the project. So there goes. Um, according to the brief that was given to us, we were supposed to find out opportunities uh, during the challenges that uh, people face during remote working and identifying opportunities to support the transition. As we all know, like 2020 has been like a year full of surprises, of a year full of roller coasters for all of us. So today more than ever, this pandemic has brought a lot of questions to our lifestyle, the way we live, something that is demanding us a lot of changes, something that is asking us to really look at our routines and do something about it to improvise the way we work. As we all know how remote working has become the new normal, hence we are all sitting here doing our graduation online, but as we all know, we are human beings and we, we, we always need some kind of uh, entertainment. We find fun in everything that we do. So uh, that shared space that we had, we, we don't have it anymore. And we wanted to find out an opportunity of making the space that we have at our homes, the remote space, as we say, uh, a little bit interesting for our, all of us to work on. So we were interested to basically study the dynamics of like human behavior, like we are, we are known to be social beings and how efficiently we can work remotely. So we did a, a few research and we uh, talked to people around the globe, our friends to develop an understanding, uh, to understand this dynamic, how it's working out for everyone working remotely and what have been the challenges in doing so. So, uh, by that, we came to some really interesting uh, like insights, which were like empathy uh, is easier when we share the same experiences because we are all going through the same situation. It's easy to relate to each other. The next one is because everyone is working remotely, it becomes difficult to coordinate uh, while working, especially if uh, the task that you're doing is, uh, has a certain level of challenge. So to ask help becomes tough, to adjust the timings becomes tough during remote working. And the, our last insights was that organization were taking special efforts to basically connect their employees to make them understand that they are not alone in this and so that they could develop a sense of belonging out of this situation. So these were three uh, keywords, which was empathy, coordination, and belonging. Based on these three words, we brainstormed on ideas uh, and tried to find a solution. One of the major thing that came up again and again during our conversation and research was that how might we develop a better understanding and empathy between employees while working remotely? So Blind Square is the solution for it. Blind Square is a platform that accesses, uh, let, lets you access with your coworkers a bunch of icebreaking game wherein you can basically get to know your team better. You can develop an understanding and coordination between the teams. So after we uh, brainstormed and we came up with this idea, we wanted to see how this product fits in in our user journey. So we did a customer journey and that really helped us understand what were the loopholes in the idea and also to understand like uh, the challenges that people are facing. We believe that um, every firm has their experience principles of the way they want their, to inform, inform their employees and the stakeholders to how they should feel while they're interacting with the brand. So for that, we did uh, a kind of, we pre created three basic principles. First was the Enchant Me, where we wanted to uh, really surprise and build a lot of stories, compelling enough for all the people who are working in the firm to uh, be communicative and engaging. And uh, every story is different. So everyone is uniquely different. So we wanted to give some uh, something to each one of the employees so they could enjoy uh, having uh, on board. The second one is uh, making it lucid. It is very important to make a workflow super brief, full of uh, visuals and less with, uh, less with words so that it's always engaging. No, none of us should feel bored while we are working. And we wanted to do, we wanted to make a platform which understands what a user wants to do, but at the same time, uh, with that, with giving the suggestions of what they should do to make a decision, there should also be a way they could uh, have the final say of what they want to decide, how they want to use it. The end goal is to 
encourage people to be super happy about their actions, engage with their uh, team members, and feel good about all those games that we want to provide through Blind Square. So how does it work? Blind Square is a super easy uh, website or a plugin that you can use along with your uh, coworkers to play. So uh, either you have, if you're an if you're an employee who wants to join a game, you can just go to the website, have a meeting code, enter your name, and start playing with your coworkers. If you are setting up a game, then you have to go to the either you can go to a website and then uh, enter all the details of the people you want to invite, or you can use Blind Square in your meeting plugins, which is our USB. Uh, something that can uh, be used in Zoom or your Google Meetup meetings so that you can uh, engage there right before your meetings and really get to know your friends. So we through this application, we also want people to uh, get creative with their avatars and uh, uh, kind of represent their mood during the time they are trying to play. And they can create their avatars. And uh, this is how the uh, layout of the website or it on the phone would look like. So it's a very simple website or a plugin that you can use uh, it on your Zoom meetings. It would appear uh, on the bar left as you can see it. Once you are on your Zoom meetings, you can, along with your employees, you can pick a game, a quick ice breaking game that you all want to play. Once everyone's okay with it, you can play it. And that will help you get closer to your employees and get to know them personally right before your meetings. Yeah, so the benefits of um, Blind Square is that it is specifically for coworkers. Uh, and if you're like going in a meeting room where you don't know people, especially while we are working remotely, it'll help you to understand the people, know them, and it's like an icebreaker so that there is no awkward silences before or after the meeting. Uh, and it is also a great way uh, to start a chat wherein, uh, for especially people who are introverts, uh, this would be superbly useful for them. So you can pick up game and while playing these games, uh, we would actually see the real personality of people and also get to know uh, and develop coordination between each other. So, yeah. So uh, this was a really interesting project for us uh, because we learned a lot about experience design during this time. And it was so interesting to actually uh, see like a, you know, opportunity uh, during this time of uh, pandemic. And also that, you know, to study the human behavior, the dynamics of it and like sort of uh, get it into our projects. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, very, very awesome work, and uh, it's also very nice to see projects that are so relevant and, uh, and beneficial for the current situation. So thank you very much, uh, Yash and Renu. Um, up next, we have another man of, of many talents. Uh, Ritvik will be presenting uh, some of his work, followed by um, Utsav, um, Oza, and uh, Vatsal after him. But first, uh, Ritvik Randir. Ritvik, can you hear me? I can see your screen. I cannot hear you if you're talking. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Perfect. All, uh, all go good. For awesome. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ritwik. I'm from Bangalore. Um, in Bangalore, I used to be somebody who used to build and criticize other people's websites. And now I've come full circle and I build and criticize my own website now. Um, my website is pretty much focused around UX design. And I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So on your landing page, this is what you'd see. Just a little bit of information about me, um, a little picture of me looking to the right so that it's a little whimsical. And of course, my name in huge letters so that you can contact me. The next thing is I wanted to keep the sections really simple so that you could learn about whatever you wanted to learn about uh, right there. So if you want to know a little bit about me, this section opens right up and you can read as much as you want. Um, on the other section, this is where I'm going to put most of my other hobbies and interests. I love working with music, so I've decided to put some of the tracks that I've worked on here. And I eventually want to put in some of the videos that I've worked on with, um, that I worked on while at Harbor Space here. And lastly, work. I've put three projects here, and of, of course, we don't have time to go through all of them. But I'd like to go through this project called Safe Space for Instagram. <laughs> Now, to give you a little bit more context about this project before I dive in, 
This is a presentation that I had made for Safe Space. This was um, as part of one of our classes, Breaking Bias, with uh, Rajiv and Lauren from the Google Maps team. Um, so the, the brief was to evaluate and reimagine uh, a current experience that might cause fear. And I went into it with a very, very basic mindset that, oh, Instagram causes people FOMO, so maybe I can try and solve that. But through my interviews, I actually realized that the problem was a little bit bigger than I thought it was. So these are some of the insights that I got from people, um, that it makes them feel stressed. Um, you know, they have anxiety from avoiding conversations. They have um, certain posts that trigger their mental health. Uh, everyone seems like, you know, they're successful on Instagram, which is a problem because, you know, obviously you're measuring yourself against everyone's best hits. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> with the pandemic, there are multiple things that are going wrong in the world and Instagram doesn't help with that. So I realized there was an opportunity to do something important here. So I started off initially with a few sketches where I had a few concepts and over time I iterated until I got to this solution called either happy place or safe space, where you can have a mode on Instagram where you can go in there when you're feeling stressed out and it only shows you the content that you want to see. So it kind of takes the stress out of the application. Another thing that I learned from my interviews was that notifications were problem causing uh, things. So when you're in your safe space, there won't be any there won't be any disturbances and it's basically just the content that you want to see on instagram without any of the noise so this is an example of how it might work i've added a nice little button next to the instagram direct message so when you tap on that you go into your happy place and if it's your first time using it you get this nice calming screen where it tells you what it is that it's turned off your notifications and you appear offline to your friends and then you can just swipe up to quickly add uh, interests that you have, and this would be your safe space. So you can fill it with whatever you want, pictures of dogs, pictures of yoga, pictures of the earth, whatever you want. So how is this represented as the case study? I thought, I felt like it was important to give an overview of the project to somebody who is reading this as like, say, for example, a recruiter or somebody who wanted to know more. So right here up top, there are four sections where you can get a grand overview of the project including what my role was in it, what, what type of project it was, who the mentors were, what the brief was, the process, et cetera. And if you go over it, there's the story structure on the left and the steps on the right. And if you say, for example, you want to dive into one of the steps, you just have to tap on that panel and it shows you the, step, the, the process that I went through in order to get to the final outcome. So, um, basically, the, the story will tell you how overall I have structured the project and the steps serve on the right to show you the, the, actual, the actual work that has put, been put in. And then this is the final visual design for the application itself. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much the project. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can find all of my work at ritvikranveer.netlify.app. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm sure you'll get there. Thanks. Cool. Thank you so much, Hrithvik. Uh, very, very awesome work and super intriguing project. I think it's, it's very, very useful for, for those of us in this, in this day and age. So thank you so much. Um, coming up next is uh, Utsaf Oza, with, uh, who will show some of his work from the year. Um, Utsaf, can you, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me and see my screen? I can hear you and I can see your screen. Go for it, Utsaf. Amazing. Uh, hello, people. I am Utsavoza. I am from India also, like you have heard so many people. But yeah, uh, I came to Hyperspace as a computer, computer science graduate with a uh, major in electronics. So my plan here was to take the tech and combine design with it. I was extremely lucky so, uh, because the second module I had was the module from Ricardo Mendieta, which taught me about creative advertising and introduced me to this concept of installations, which after that became my hyperspace life. So I'll guide you through the portfolio. My portfolio is based on one single statement that one of our teachers, Joshua Davis said, uh, a portfolio has to be a representation of yourself. And this, this uh, website shows exactly who I am. So I would like to guide you through it. 
the concept is inspired from a Catalan magazine, which I was looking at, and it had this very nice element of uh, 2020 on the top. Uh, since I made this in one of uh, made this website during one of the uh, hardest years, I want to highlight that. I want to people to know that this is when this happened. Uh, if you go through the projects, my first project is a project uh, which uh, which was also mentored by uh, Ricardo Mendieta. Uh, which was for Vans and we won an international award called the One Club. Then I have another installation called Estrella Dam, which takes into consideration how we can save the Mediterranean Sea through showing people and creating awareness about how much plastic we are generating. And the third project is about the economical gap between the developed nations and the developing nations uh, uh, during the COVID-19 lockdowns and how we can share data between them. Uh, like you can see, most of my projects have been inspired through causes because that's the kind of work I want to do. And that's a, that's the kind of work I want to associate myself with. Uh, yeah, I have my prior experience, the about page and the contact on uh, this website itself. I'll, uh, I'll not take you through all the projects, but I'll just take you to the Vans one which, because that's my favorite one. Uh, for the case study page, I have a uh, simple header which shows uh, the same design as the main page. I have the brief and I wanted things to be very, very simple so that people don't have to read on my page. Uh, that's why I just have the design process listed out because the most people would be coming to this website to read a case study would already know what these processes are. Uh, I have the solution. I have the demo of the actual installation. So the installation was basically a game. Uh, like you must have seen when you don't have internet, the uh, jump game on Chrome. Uh, it's a similar game, but it works with a device called Leap Motion, which takes uh, sensor information of your fingers and based on that, uh, creates some interactions. Uh, best way to show that would be the case study video, which I can play. Uh, is there audio? Okay. Uh, I can't hear. No, I, we cannot hear you. Uh, okay, I'll reshare. Yeah. Sorry for that. Yeah, can you see it now? Yeah, we can see it. Let's see if the audio works. No, it's not still audio. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, can fix what's this? If you want to, yeah, if you just want to to continue, and we can we can perhaps send people to the website afterwards. Uh, yeah, I just wait. You are the skater. Every trick you do is an expression of who you are. That's why your skating is fucking gnarly. But you need tools that can keep up with your hard work. Because behind every tray flip landed, there are countless falls and falls and falls. So we took the design of the classic vans you already love and upgraded them with technology that can keep up with your skating. Cushioning, durability, and the reason why they matter are big ideas. We needed to make them small enough to fit inside of a store. If only there was a miniature version of a skateboard that you could manipulate with your fingers to demonstrate this. Oh wait. The tech of the campaign had to be as interesting as the one in the shoes. We discussed, sketched, and programmed an interactive game that would create an engaging experience inside the store. As you ollie over the obstacles using the motion sensing device, you can see how the regular shoes get worn off with every trick. But once you reach the new Pro Classics, it's a very different story. Vans Pro Classics are high performance, durable, modern skate shoes hiding underneath classic, beloved silhouettes. We've made these timeless classics truly timeless. 
Yeah, so that's the case study. Uh, I would like to end this by thanking the people who helped me made the, make the website. Uh, most of the code was done by Ankit Karnani. Uh, Pranav Joy helped me with making this optimized because as you can see, there are 12 videos on the main screen and it still loads. So thank you Pranav for that. I would like to thank Mitchell Lopez, Ritwik Randir and my dad for giving me constant feedback on these designs. That's it. Thank you guys. This year has been a journey. I hope to keep in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much, Yutsav. And also very, very excited to see what you're going to do in the future. I imagine it's going to be awesome. Um, cool. So we're going to follow up with uh, another one of our designers, uh, Vatsal Shah. Uh, v, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you very well. Um, anytime you want to share your screen, you'll be ready to go. Perfect. I'll just start sharing. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, you see it? Go for okay. It. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vatsal. I'm also from India, like a few other students that you saw before. And this is my online portfolio. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about one specific case study that I have worked on uh, along with a couple of other students at Harbor Space. So it was with uh, Ritwik and Yegor. Um, so yeah, this is my uh, online portfolio, the website. And I have three main case studies that I'm showing here. So this is the Gentleman Manifesto, which I worked uh on along with Alex and it's basically a community of men fighting toxic masculinity and uh, sexual abuse against women. So we have created a website and we are working along with uh, young boys aged 11 to 16 years old uh, against this um, problem. Uh, the second case study that I've shown here is uh, about Lisa Freak, who is a German dancer and a choreographer and I've done the brand designing for her. And the third one is mood, which is what I'm gonna be talking about now. Uh, so before we get into the details of the entire uh, case study, I'd first like to give some context, which is actually something that has been shared by a couple of other students before as well. Uh, so we had the opportunity of working on a three week long research, uh, which was all about remote work, uh, the future of workplaces, and how the pandemic is affecting the way we work right now and how we can improve it. So we did a small uh, research along with a few participants across the globe. And we had a few insights from the conversations we had, the desk research we did. And we found out that smooth collaboration, so collaborating within the teams and with other teams as well in an organization is one of the places where um, the efficiency could really go down. And that is something that needs a lot of uh, work. So there were three main questions that we had as to how we could improve it. Uh, the first one was how we could eliminate communication gaps and misunderstandings because of the lack of nonverbal communication in today's work setting and also in the future. Uh, the second was how we can build personal relationships along with our teammates, our managers, subordinates, everyone within the organization. And the third one is how we could place more emphasis on the mental health and personal well-being of everyone who's working with you. Um, so yeah, we came up at all of this brought to the broadest to the concept of mood, which is basically a new way of visualizing emotions to understand each other better. So now all, all these gradients that you see here, uh, each, each of these colors represent a single emotion. And when you look at them, you would understand how a person is actually feeling based on the object that you see and the colors you see. So how this works is you have uh, four different um, devices in this whole experience. So you have an employee object, uh, which is right there at the desk and you have an app that the employee uses. So for example, if Brian is using the app and you know, he's, he's feeling really happy and he updates that um, as a status on the app, that will be instantly reflected in the object. So when you walk around his desk or if you look at his profile on the app, you know how he's exactly feeling at that point of time. And this goes on throughout the whole day and whenever they keep sharing. Um, and then you have the manager software, which keeps track of a lot of different things uh, that you can get through all, all these interactions with the app and the object. And it's actually, um, 
really helpful for the manager to understand that uh, okay let's say this particular employee employee is feeling really stressful or is really happy on the other hand while working on this project so maybe they can you know come up with ways of how they can reshuffle the team how they can work it out to increase the efficiency and the third one is a team uh, sorry the fourth one is the team installation which is right there on the office wall and it's a compilation of uh, the emotions and the colors and the gradients of all the teammates uh, that are working together so it's basically a representation of how a team is feeling at any given point of time um, now to get here we did the research uh with six participants across the globe and we answered these three questions that i uh, spoke about earlier and then we entered the concepting phase and we tried to understand how we can actually uh, you know solve this problem of collaboration and uh, build empathy towards each other and make them you know better co-workers uh, within the team and we defined some experience principles which were um, you know just defining the way we design the whole experience uh, along with all the users and those were be empathetic self reflect and be a team and then we went on with the whole customer journey and service blueprint so we imagine uh, how a day in the life of a user would uh, look like and how they would interact with every single touch point and what technologies would be used in uh, you know understanding how they are feeling so it includes facial recognition voice assistant the updates that you uh, put in through your app and every other thing that's related related to the entire experience um which then led us to designing uh, the experience through wireframes and the app uh, and then we built the visual design for the app for the object and the team installation and that's basically it for this project and this was the team i worked with rithvik and yegor and david nikola was our mentor and that's it for the case study thank you so much guys i really had a great year at our space thank you so much vatsal uh, it was great seeing your project and it was a real pleasure having you um with us this year um up next we have um yi who uh, has joined Harbor Space's interaction design program also with a very creative background so very excited to see um what you will be showing us today. Yi, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me and can you see my screen? Uh yes, I can see your screen and I can hear you very well. So go ahead whenever you want, Yi. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Yi. I'm from China and uh yeah, so I'm so glad to present my portfolio today and as you know, I was a chemi uh, chemical engineer before. But three years ago, I decided to quit my job and uh, became a designer. So I tried different jobs, and uh, they're all about products, but in the digital world. But then I realized that I need to improve. So after meeting with Jason and uh, Mitch in the tech talk, I decided to join Harbor Space, and I feel it's really like a gas station. So. I was powered up and learned lots of professional skills and some of them I never touched before but it's really empowered me to become a better designer. So yeah, let me show my portfolio here. So you can see I consider myself like a user, researcher, UX and UI designer and web designer and I'm really enthusiastic in building any new digital experience, uh, product platform and products. And here you see because I, everyone knows that I like making comics. So here I put this animation as my branding, and also a link to my CV. So you can see everything about me on this header. And when you scroll down, you see the product, uh, the projects I did. So for example, I did a recruiter dashboard for a startup called Flutter, and a digital magazine for, um, yeah, for web, and. Also, um, in the team, I did a, a gamification business platform, a virtual office called Collab for the coworkers who cannot go to the office during the quarantine, and some other here also like a um, landing page uh, for identity for the beta test uh, uh, campaign. And I want to show you one uh, case study, which is I did for Flutter. Um, it is a, a Flutter is a startup uh, of a talent record acquisition and assessment platform for B two B offering B two B service for recruiters, 
And um, I was doing this one alone because I was the only designer at that moment. And uh, yeah, so I did this in two weeks. So basically um, in these two weeks, I did a, a job page and a candidate card, which you can see here. I'm gonna show you a demo. Yeah, you see the video? So I designed a job card with a to-do list and a call to action next to it. And the candidates are a uh, candidate card with their status and the pro uh, and the, the recruitment uh, progress information, and also the H what what uh, action that the HR need to take regarding to each of these candidates, and the new uh, filter and the sorting system, uh, which are differentiated by different colors. I really like this project because this is a, a growing startup. They really had a problem where. At that moment, because the people don't understand it, so the result after I redesigned it, the result was quite good. Now I want to show you the the process because they had a, a, a dashboard before like this, and uh, people don't understand how to use it, and it wasn't really successful. So I started with a usability test, and then uh, to diagnose the problem. And then I did stakeholder and user interviews to understand the different needs from different users. And then came up with a how, how my way uh, question. Then uh, only tackle to how to um, improve the task management. And then to understand the market, I did the competitor analysis. And here I either uh, ideated. So I decided to simplify the information on the candidate's card and use a, a funnel to visualize the current status and design a call to action with a to-do list to help them manage the incomplete tasks. Then in the UX design, I did user journey, user flows, and car sorting and site map. And I did the branding as well, choose a blue and to represent the trust and intelligence. And so how it works, so on the job management page, you can see the it with uh, you can see the numbers of candidates in different stage and the to do list with a call to action for each job opening, and for the candidates management, um, so tracking. Uh, like you can track each of the candidates and see they are in different colors and simply drag and drop and then update the, the their their status. And now the filters and sorting system is more intuitive. And I also did the, the mobile version. Yeah. So as you can see, I redesigned the, uh, the, the dashboard for Flutter. And then the result was after the new version released in two weeks, the new uh, registration increased by 20%. And also we got the feedback from the existing uh, users that they really like it and they understand it better. And it helps Flutter win this D-Lab uh, prize uh, given by, granted by Mobile World Capital Barcelona in 2018 uh, to, re to reduce the gap gender. So here, <laughs> like I'm here. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that's why I'm really proud of this product. And so let me come back to this. Uh... Hi, Yi. Yeah. Ah, perfect. It's your, thank you. Yeah, so this is ahead. just like ending. So okay. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Yi. Uh, and very, very happy to to have you a part of the, the family. It was great welcoming you to Harbor Space this year. Um, coming up next, we have uh, Leonid, who will be. Uh, yeah, one sec. Yeah, uh, uh, who'll be presenting a project from uh, from his portfolio. Yeah, just one sec. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can see your screen uh, now. Go oh, ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is 
Leo, and I'm from Russia. I have a bachelor in art and design and graduated in 2018. And in Hyperspace, I had an opportunity to get to know a lot of different design disciplines. And I would like to highlight and pay attention more to the class that I enjoyed the most. It was the motion design class with Paul. And uh, one um, yeah. And for me personally, uh, animation and the motion graphics is something about that allows you uh, to express yourself the most, both as an artist or as a designer. And I would like to share with you one project that I performed in Hyperspace a year ago uh, when I did the class with Paul. But before jumping into the actual animation, I would like to explain about you the initial project I had and this project I did two years back and two years back, uh, where I lived, when I lived in Moscow, uh, in a city called Krasnogorsk. It's a very small town, very close to Moscow. And in design school, I had a brief uh, to come up with a design solution and which would promote the local sport activities. And I decided to promote something very popular and local in our district. And I designed a book which illustrates um, and I uh, designed a book which illustrates uh, and explains how to play uh, very local games. And it was a very big pleasure for me to work on this project because I was able to capture a lot of memorable moments with my friends while I was also participating in those games. And I do believe that this project uh, is about bringing people back together. And in Hyperspace, I was able to cover the motion part of this project because uh, it was just a book. And I thought like, maybe why not just to use uh, this project to experiment with motion graphics part. And uh, the first uh, video is like a promotional video. And uh, I explained I experimented uh, with uh, many different techniques and oh wait. and uh, um, and what I really enjoyed about this uh, specific uh, uh, animation is because Paul held me. So Paul helped me to illustrate and visualize all the crazy ideas I had in my mind. And I learned really a lot with this class. The second animation is uh, very simple. It is about the concept of a mobile app. So for example, what if we will extend this project into the idea of what if there would be an app that would allow you to uh, find someone to play local games. Like if, you don't, if your friends are busy, uh, you could go and um, use an app for that, a map that would help you to uh, find some very local sports games and you could join them. And this is this part, I didn't really cover the UI part here, but it was more about the animation just in general. And it was just like a one week project, but I really enjoyed that. And uh, if you want to watch some more projects. I also have a website with the projects and there is a link for it. So uh, where I explain this project more. Yeah, thank you. Great, Leo. Thank you so much. Uh, very, very cool project, lovely aesthetic. Um, we wrap up our design portfolio um, section with um, one last presentation from uh, Araya who will be presenting uh, some of the work that she's done. Araya, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Um, so go ahead and share your screen and uh, that'll wrap up the, uh, this section. I really apologize, we've run a bit over time, um, but uh, the startups are coming up after this presentation. But first, Araya with her portfolio. 
Hi, so I'm Mariah. I'm an interaction designer and an artist, um, and I specialize in UI and visual design. And my work questions a lot of status quo and empower marginalized voices. Coming from politics and psychology background, I really try to, um, well, I have tried in the past to equalize the playing field, like socially and economically. Um, and I convey that through a lot of my designs as well. My design is, has raw and refined aesthetics and it is really like brutal. You can play with these, but they're also like fun interactions. Um, the portfolio projects that I'm going to show, they're all related to how we can um, empower voices and um, yeah, like question all the ideas that we have. So the first project, which is the case study and that I'm going to go into later, is the project with Anton Raponin um, about an online publication, I chose to do an online publication, an electronic um, music magazine that empowers marginalized voices through um, underground movements. Um, the second one in my portfolio is an experimental website that explores gender fluidity um, and it crosses the um, binary visions of femininity and masculinity through abstractions of visuals. And I use creative coding and you can click through the projects. The third one is using anti-design to um, let undergraduates film um, graduates <laughs> um, connect with the industry more and using like um, anti-design aesthetics to, for Gen Z to grab their attention. And the last one in my portfolio is an experiment that I did during, self, uh, during quarantine about, it's a psychological experiment that explores our generated relationship patterns between ourselves and others. And so you can go briefly about me in my info, you can learn more about me and you can play my flipping game <laughs> to learn <laughs> more about um, my interests. And there's a CV section and the testimonials. So in my works, I want to explore um, the case study that I was mentioning earlier. So I use like bold um, colors and aesthetics. I chose red with red image treatments and the typography is bold um, with a mix of serif and sans serif fonts. So this is the homepage and I have email subscription, the long reads and the, sh like the short and the long article is exemplified by the space that it takes in the page. And I also visualize, I designed my own visualizer um, because I thought it was appropriate for a music magazine to have their own visualizer. And this is the article page, a short article page with the quotes and then in the end, when you reach the end of the article, you can navigate through other articles without going back to the homepage. And you can share the articles as well. And this is one of the interactive um, articles that I design and I use motion design to elaborate how to visualize by how to experience binaural sound. I focus an article on this artist that explores an amniotic sac traveling through space. And so I try to have the audience experience that firsthand by placing themselves in a spacey um, environment and navigating through sound, hearing different sounds. And when you hover on this, you can hear the sound and discovering like vulnerability through whispered sound in space. Um, here, the artist inspired by another artist, James Terrell, which is my favorite artist. And as you scroll, you can see the shooting star and it goes to the next section of the article. And here is another um, section that you can explore different sounds, placing yourself visually, uh, spatially in uh, the room. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's for me, my portfolio site. And I'm happy to um, be graduating now, but also taking more classes. And I'm excited to learn more in the future, in the coming, upcoming modules. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Araya. And uh, real congratulations to all of our designers um, who have come a very, very long way through what is a very challenging program. Um, so really, really proud of all of you. Um, our final 
section for the uh, for the demo day presentations are the startups, um, which are the third kind of capstone that um, that we offer opportunity that we offer our students, um, and it is where, as you can imagine, they take an idea. Um, and eventually take it through the entire process of building their own company until it is a fully functioning uh, startup, or at least it is at the stage where it is absolutely ready um, to be an industry ready company. So uh, these are um, presentations from our entrepreneur students, um, and we're very excited uh, to be able to kick it off with a presentation from Maurice and Hossein um, and their company, Identity. Hi. Hi, Maurice. Hello. Hey. Uh, and hello, Jose. Um, good to hear both of you. I cannot see your screens yet. Yeah, we're starting with all the screen shares. So um, together with Florian, <laughs> we are building identity. And if you're anything like us, you know what it's like to struggle with procrastination. I mean, all of us set New Year's resolutions. We want to get uh, into better shape or meditate daily only to find ourselves letting it slip yet again after two weeks. And based on research and my experience as a coach, we know that nothing helps nearly quite as much as finding accountability partners. But interestingly enough, there's not a real app out there that truly bases on this insight. That's why Identity is a social habit tracking app. It's like having your accountability group in your pocket. Uh, it's a cool story of actually me joining this project. Um, I had this one course uh, with Maurice and Maurice was just pitching his idea about this video that he wanted to make. And I immediately was like, oh, this is, this is a very cool idea. And I had many different ideas. So I, uh, I stayed after class and I started talking to him. And that was back in January. And from that moment on, we, we worked together to build it out and the rest is history. <laughs> so I'm going to share my screen now to uh, yeah. share my we, video. And we also want to thank uh, other fellow students who helped us along the way, like Javier, Jonathan, Yi, Roham, Naza, just to name a few. And we actually launched our public beta six weeks ago. And within that time, we collected one and a half thousand registered users and 3,000 uh, 3, email leads. Um, and instead of giving you the typical investors pitch, we decided to show us something differently which is our video for our upcoming crowdfunding campaign, which launches on the 1st of October. So have fun. Okay, do you guys have my screen? Uh, yes, we do, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Hopefully it will have also a sound. It does not. It does not? No, Hussein, I can't hear you. I okay, can't. I'm going to I'm going to just uh, quit Zoom and open it again. Or maybe AJ, could you maybe share your screen? I, I've seen that you showed a video earlier. Um, and then I'm going to send the link to you. Or maybe anyone else, I just shared the link in the chat. This would be amazing if you could help us out. All righty, I will, oh. You are already having it. Hi, uh, we still can't don't have audio. No, there's still no audio. Maybe I can try again. Yeah. If you okay. want to give it sure. Your sound. Okay. Optimize. Share. Okay. Now, didn't you want to spend your time working out, meditating, writing your song, or build your own startup? But again, I'm probably worse than you. <laughs> but we have to realize. 
that worked well. Just make it full screen and sorry for the delay, guys. Then you want to spend your time working out, meditating, writing your song or build your own startup? But I can't. I'm probably worse than you. <laughs> but we have to realize that we are generation procrastination. We love dreaming and speaking about our fulfilled life in the future and how we'll make things differently. But instead of following our passion and actually making a difference, we're going down the rabbit hole of cat memes and Netflix. <laughs> That's why we are building identity. Identity is a social habit tracking app. It's like having your accountability group in your pocket. So when you check in that you meditated today and made progress with learning a new language, you fill up your identity. It's kind of a self portrait as it's growing when you're making real life progress. And here's the cool part. We learned that the fastest way to reach your goals is by joining a tribe of like-minded people. So let's join a tribe for startup founders. Now other founders can high five you for signing up your first users. <laughs> can give you advice on your next social media campaign and kick your virtual butt when you're lazy again. Likewise, you can also join a tribe for personal development, freelancing or social impact. And I bet that most of you have something valuable to share as well. And with Denti, it will actually be easy to create something like a 21 day minimalism challenge or a video course on <laughs> piano. And at the click of a button, other users can subscribe to your habits and courses and simply add them to their routines. You can already test our beta at identity.app and habit tracking and basic social features will be free forever. I'm not working on this alone. Florian can do basically everything, which is annoying, but he's most notably an aerospace engineer and our designer. And Hossein is quite simply the smartest guy I ever met. He's got years of experience in competitive programming and mobile app development. And now, we need your support to develop the next features to make Identity truly the best app to fight procrastination. So please join us as our co-creator. You don't need to have a great routine yet, but together we can stop wasting our time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. That was it. Back us first of October Indiegogo. Thank you so much. Uh, Maurice, Hossein, Florian. Uh, that was identity. Very, very cool work guys. Um, expecting a lot. Awesome. Um, okay. Following this will be uh, MD Nurezaman with, uh, with Super. Um, the I see you're already one step ahead of the game. I would have expected no less from you. So uh, just do a sound check with me and we'll give you the floor. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Do we look or for... great? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Naza and I'm joined by my co-founder, Nude. And together we will be presenting Super, the startup where we help supermarkets use their data to increase their profits. This is Angel. He's a regional manager at a supermarket chain in Argentina, and he's personally responsible for 13 stores. His yearly bonus depends on the performance of these supermarkets, so he's in a constant battle with their inefficiencies. For example, food waste alone takes away more than 2% of every store's yearly revenue. This may not sound like much, but for Angel's 13 stores, that 2% is actually more than $2 million that go down the drain every year. For reference, that's how much those stores expect to make in profit in that same year. And this waste problem happens across thousands of products and at every single store, which is why it's impossible for him to fix it. Thankfully, he has something that he can use to identify the root causes of this problem and their respective solutions, data. What we do is to plug into this database, process the data, analyze it, and identify the opportunities to reduce the store's waste. We then deliver insights through actionable recommendations that he can use to stop throwing food away, increase the store's profits, and get his yearly bonus. I've known Angel all my life because he's actually my dad, and he's been in the supermarket industry for longer than I've been alive. He was the one that approached me with this problem. And he also put me in contact with Bea, who worked at SAP for 16 years, leading the implementation of retail solutions throughout Latin America. She had been contacted to go back to work for them, but refused because they were not leveraging relevant technologies to help solve the retailer's problems. 
I reached out to her for some guidance in the project, but she asked me to become a full-time member of the team. I've known Julian for more than 10 years. With his experience working as a technical auditor in PricewaterhouseCoopers and dealing with big data, it made perfect sense for him to take care of the data analytics at Super. And Nude, I met during our studies and led a project together for a year. Uh, he previously worked as, as a software engineer at Tally Solutions, which is the biggest ERP solution in India, even bigger than SAP. So this is where the solution actually looks like. And here, Angel can easily identify the priorities of his stores, like the fact that he has too much coffee at store 260. Our solution gives him the option to check if another store, another one of his stores needs some more or to create a promotion to get rid of it. He can also have a clear understanding of the store's performance over time, thanks to our graphs, which make it, make it much easier for everyone who works there to be on the same page. OK, so most of our competitors uh, have generic logistic optimization that addresses this issue for everyone, but then it doesn't resolve the problems of the retail industry specifically. In contrast, we are specializing in the supermarket industry. Also, unlike the other players, we do not require any hardware or software migrations in order to use our product. We integrate seamlessly with their existing infrastructure. And while the other products are great at displaying information, managers have no idea what to actually do with it. By providing actionable insights to our clients, we ensure that the learnings from the data translate into tasks that they can actually execute. We have visualized those competitive advantages in this two by two matrix with market specialization and ease of implementation as our access. Uh, and as you can see, we are in the top right quadrant. Our business model is actually quite straightforward. We split the profits that we generate from for our clients evenly. To illustrate it, let's look at one of the chains that we are in advanced negotiations with, DMA. They currently lose 2.4% of their revenues to waste. With our solution, we can bring that number down to 1.4%, which translates on average into an extra $38,000 in profit per store per year. As I mentioned before, we split those profits evenly. So DMA keeps 19,000 in extra profits per store, and we take the same amount in revenue. But that's per store, and DMA has 150 stores. So with full integration, we potentially make 2.85 million US dollars per year. The top 18 chains in Argentina have a total of 2,400 stores, an average of 133 each. With the current business model, uh, acquiring four customers in the next four years would result in a market of more than 10 million US dollars. So within the first three months of our operation, we have built our team uh, and we have created our first prototype. We are currently in advanced negotiations with four major retail chains regarding pilot programs. That was it for today. Uh, and I'd like to ask you for one thing. If you know someone like NASA's dad, please don't hesitate to put us in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to both of you, uh, NASA and MD. So great to see you present. Um, we have our next presentation is uh, Stephanie Kessman with uh, Companion Care. Stephanie? Hi, Jason. Hi. Um, very excited to see you present. Uh, so I can hear you very well. Do you want to try sharing your screen? Here we go. Perfect. Stephanie, go for it. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie, and this is my last day at Harbor Space as a student. I would like to open this presentation uh, with a great thank you to everyone at Harbor Space to the team and the administration and everybody who has made their impact on my journey here. So this university is more than a university, it's a community and a learning space, and it's been very important to me. So over the last year, I transitioned from a very insecure young person into someone who is soon going to be a CEO of a health tech startup, which is quite scary. And for that, I would like to thank everyone in this call and in this event. So let's dive in into what is Companion Care. Care has a new name, Companions, and we're a platform for finding non-medical care and assistance for elderly. Now, one in three senior citizens feels lonely and addressing the emotional needs of the elderly has become a major challenge for care providers, family members, and friends. And it was for my family as well. 
So these are my grandparents. A year and a half ago, my grandfather passed away, leaving my grandmother after being happily married and inseparable for 60 years. She was a bright and happy woman all her life, but when she lost him, she was quite never the same. She was never alone, but she was lonely. A year later, this January, she passed away, and I wish we could have done more for her. The importance of mental health. Right now, there is most loneliness ever recorded. United Kingdom even has its own minister of loneliness. By the year 2050, there will be over 2 billion people over the age of 60. And this is creating a demographic shift, which we call the silver tsunami, which means that older people will actually outnumber children for the first time ever in 10 years time. Aged care, as we know it right now, is not ready to support this problem fully. That's why we're creating Companio Care, which is a friends on demand service for aging seniors. Because most of the time, what everybody really needs is a friend. We are a marketplace, which means that we onboard companions and we match them to clients. Our companions are individuals like you and me, stay at home parents, students, part-time job seekers, literally anyone, no CV required. We're looking for companions who are good people, not good resumes and no professional experience necessary to become a senior companion. You don't need a background in care. Anyone can be a companion. And we match them to clients who are the family of the elderly, their children, grandchildren, friends, family, neighbors, or the elderly themselves. Activities we offer with companions. So in our platform, we specialize in matching the families to companions offering entertainment, which can be done through games, going for events together, doing arts and crafts, uh, focusing on health, well-being, whether this is doing yoga on YouTube together and just having fun. So all these activities are easily initiated by the companion. We have a subscription business model, which means that you can book monthly visits through one visit per week, two visits per week, or three visits per week with four, eight, or 12 visits in total. And this is something that you get once, and then every month you, your grandparents or parent gets a visit from a companion from us. With 165 companions, we can serve a thousand clients with the average price of the service of 20 euros per hour. And we take 10 uh, as a commission fee. So this is possible because the minimal job requirement that we ask for, usually people get paid about five euros per hour and we're paying double. Our total addressable market is 1.2 billion million socially isolated and financially comfortable senior citizens which are with a beachhead of 12,000 people in Barcelona with 2,000 companions. We talked to companions. We wanted to understand if people are interested in doing this job because ultimately our success depends on how well they do their job. So I really wanted to understand if people will bring the compassion and empathy and love and communication and all these things that we need for this to work. So out of 25 people I interviewed, 16 met the criteria perfectly, which made me believe in the mission even stronger. Two thirds of them even preferred full-time positions to be a senior companion. We are going to have an admission process. Yes, anybody can become a companion, but you need to go through a process, face-to-face -face meetings, personality checks, police checks, and reference check in order to maximize the security. We are a complement to traditional aged care. So we are not competing with nurses or living arrangements. We understand these are medical and these need to be there. But we also don't want nurses providing companionship. We want everybody else to provide the companionship. And there are others who are doing this already. My team consists of me, Dushan, Diala, and Paul and Chris as our tech team in California. And together we're looking to raise 150K seed investment to reach 1,650 uh, companions in Barcelona and 10,000 clients in year one, with this money being spent on companion training, operational costs, and marketing. And we want companionship for elderly anytime, anywhere. Thank you. Amazing, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Uh, and always very impressive to see how far this has come. Wishing you the best for the future. Um, up next, we have Guardian May. 
Um, em uh, Emily and Elena will be presenting uh, Emily's project. So Emily, if you want to just give a, a soundtrack. Hi. Hello. Um, so we can hear you, we can see you, and uh, yeah, take it from here. Emily. Okay. Hi, my name is Emily Nelson, and I'm here to talk to you about Guardian A. 85, that is the number that I want you all to remember as it holds meaning throughout this presentation. I'm here today to share with you the story of a 22-year-old girl born and raised in London. She first started experiencing sexual abuse at a young age. 12 is as far back as she remembers. It starts with catcalling and inappropriate comments made by peers and elders. Then at around 14, 15, it turns physical, groping and forceful kissing. At 18, she was drugged and raped while on a night out with friends. Alone, scared, and in the most vulnerable state imaginable, the idea of calling the police or telling someone is far too daunting to bear. It would be easier to forget and move on, she thought to herself, and how wrong she was. Post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, and a nervous breakdown were just a handful of the issues that followed, even today, four years on. This was my story of rape survival, and sadly, the one of many others. 85,000 every year in the United Kingdom, to be precise. This is a 350% increase within the last decade. 85% of them were also unreported. That is 85% of rapists, unpunished and on the streets, and 85% of women suffering in silence. We call them rape and abuse survivors for a reason. Not all of us make it out alive. Many become victims of homicide or suicide. We at Guardian A are offering a high-tech and a holistic mobile application, delivering a variety of services to ensure women's health, safety, and survival. These fall under the following brackets, prevention, emergency, and support. Now, the ones we've highlighted are the ones that have been identified as being the highest priority features. We start with our prevention features, which we hope to help, will help our users avoid incidents of sexual harassment and assault altogether. For example, the safest travel route home feature might have prevented my friend from going down the street where she was subjected to indecent exposure when she was 14. Now, if something were to happen, we want to provide our users with emergency features that would help victims in the immediate aftermath of an incident. In particular, in-app crime reporting would help women regain some degree of control over the situation, as well as tackle the issue of underreporting. In the longer run, users would have access to a range of support features that would help minimize the long-term trauma caused by any incidents. The most important of these would be a centralized source of legal and medical information that would help women better understand the next steps to dealing with what they've gone through. So why are we best equipped to tackle this issue? This feature comparison model highlights the gaps in the current systems that are fundamentally restricted and have raised issues around user privacy. Despite raising 120 million US dollars, Live360 has seen widespread criticism and boycotting over its inability to cater for the user over the customer. And this is where we come in. We're starting with our B2B markets, women in higher education, uh, B2C market, women in higher education and young working women. With this demographic, the most effective point of contact is social media, Instagram in particular. We plan to use Instagram ads to attract users, and we're finding influencers who can use their platforms to propel our mission to our most at-risk potential users, allowing us this far to reach 2 million users. We know there is traction within this demographic, as we recorded a 15% conversion rate from our landing page and validated our pricing through a series of interviews and surveys, with over 85% of our interviewees identifying sexual violence as a pain point of seven or above. We will offer a freemium subscription model with a selection of basic features with individual accounts costing $2.99 a month and group packages at a discounted price of $1.75 per user per month. Our target demographic encompasses 11 million women in the United Kingdom, but we intend to start in London where the prevalence of sexual assault is much higher. We believe we can capture roughly 10% of that market, which amounts to 3.9 million pounds annually. My name is Emily Nelson and I'm the founder and CEO. I've worked um, in various political initiatives and spent years working with Oxfam and the British government on various social issues. My tech co-founder, Mona, obtained her PhD in software engineering and machine learning and is a board member with Women in Engineering and co-managing director for Girls in Tech in Palestine. She's currently managing our team of developers who are based there. 
Alex Fearon, our CFO and COO, is a data scientist who's worked in operations at the San Francisco-based startup Hover Inc. and worked in debt advisory for Trade Risks and as an analyst for Chelsea Football Club. But it's time we got going. We've done our market research, we've assembled a team, and we've started building our products and partnerships. But we need seed funding to address this opportunity head on. We're asking for £200,000 in investment, and this is how we'd spend it. There is incredible room for growth and expansion into our B2B and B2G segments, and we look forward to addressing those markets when time and cash permits. The Guardian A vision and mission has no borders or gender. We look forward to catering to men, women, and the LGBTQ plus community on a global scale in years to come. If you believe in our mission and want to save lives, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, uh, Emily. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this project uh, come to reality. So best of luck. Um, up next, we have uh, one of our bachelor students um, who has taken a project very far. Um, and we're very excited to see him present. Uh, Pranav will be presenting Hard Boiled. Um, Pranav, I, can you hear us? I'm just messing with you. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Um, you have, have uh, yeah, can you share your screen? Thank you very much. Are you able to see my screen? No. Yes, we can, Pranav. <laughs> Real funny, Jason. Just a second. Technology. All right. So um, the year was 2018 when I finally got my very own Alexa. As we all know, Alexa, the smart home device that we all use to um, do a variety of tasks. But as a, uh, as a user of video games and a lot of interactive experiences, I found the potential was very limited with what the Alexa could do. And this genuinely frustrated me. And quickly this led to me realizing, of course, this just means I can make something that would actually work to utilize the total potential of a smart home device, which is why I put together a team of designers and developers to create uh, an interactive audio experience for smart home devices. And we call it hard-boiled technologies, which is a play on words. And what we tried to achieve is create a non-linear interactive audio experience for smart home devices. And that's exactly what we did. So we are one week away from release and here's a small sneak peek into what the game actually looks and feels like. Is there no audio? There's, yeah, there's no audio. Of course there isn't. Just a second. Let me reshare my screen. Hello? Is there anyone there? Hello? Oh no, it's too far. Mayday, Mayday, I've lost contact with base, please, Mayday. This is the only communication device I have left. Uh, there's rubble on the left, exposed cable on the right. Please, just please tell me what to do. If the audio and the video that you just witnessed was terrible, that is definitely not the experience we're going for. But let's just imagine that went very well and move on to how there was a real problem in creating such a video game. The problem that we experienced was that it was incredibly difficult to write and organize a story that was nonlinear, as in multiple narratives, multiple branches. And if we were gonna be a company that was gonna create multiple versions of this game or different games, we needed to be able to be able to write stories more efficiently. To create the game that we just saw, I had to use this tool called Yarn. And it, was, it had a lot of issues uh, with its underlying construction. 
And we decided, what if, I mean, we're a team of designers and developers, we should be able to create a solution for this, which is why we needed to create a tool that was, which gave us the ability to track the performance of the story, organize it more effectively and collaborate amongst different writers. Which is why we came up with Synopsys, a story writing tool. Synopsis is a web-based narrative tool that helps organize stories more efficiently. It runs simulations on different nodes of graphs and also collaborate in real time. Our target market currently is uh, in game developers, specifically indie game developers. Currently, we have 10 million game developers worldwide, 100,000 indie game developers, and 15,000 game developers that we believe we will be able to acquire in the next four years which equates to our serviceable obtainable market to $150,000 in the next four years. Our business model aims to provide our users a cloud-based uh, software as a service solution through a simple subscription-based model. We're gonna go with the freemium-based model where we have a, a tier one, which is free forever, and it gives you the ability for cloud-based integration and also integration with popular game engines. While the $10 per user per month, a more enterprise solution for larger game studios has additional features such as logic testing and 24 seven customer support. Our main competitors in this space currently is a tool called Craft, which does a similar, uh, does a, offer a solution for quite similar to ours, but is impossible to collaborate. It is a desktop solution. It's not cloud-based and has additional problems acquire, uh, that come with the fact that it's not a cloud-based solution. While our solution is much easier to collaborate with and also is an incredible non-linear narrative design solution. Uh, in order to generate an established traction, because this was a fairly late pivot in our entire um, process, we were only able to contact a few uh, game studios and kind of get what their experience was writing stories. And currently we're in talks with Bananas Academy as you saw earlier today, where they were also creating a tool and I mean, creating a game and found it hard to organize and create the stories. We are also talking with IDC and IIT Mumbai and also Cyber the Game as you saw before. Uh, as for investment, we're currently looking for $70,000 investment for one year's worth of runway. And with the $70,000, we'll be able to create an infrastructure to support the platform and also we have an estimated acquisition rate of 60 paying customers by the end Q4 of 2021. This seems relatively small, but we accounted for up to six months of the upcoming year to create the platform and also user test it before giving it out to customers, which um, equates to a revenue for the first year to around $7,200, which will only, as we assume, to exponentially increase. Well, that's, that's it for me. Uh, um, would you like to give us an absurd amount of money? You can contact us at support at hardboard.tech. Thank you. Thank you so much, Parna. Amazing work. Always a pleasure seeing you present. Um, and best of luck with your, with your venture. Um, up next, we have uh, Nicolas Ivanovich, who will be presenting Envy. Hi, Nico. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Um, and I think I'll be able to see your screen. Yeah, I can see your screen now. Um, go for it, whenever you're ready. Perfect. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Envy, saving your life one drink at a time. So if you go into Google right now and type in energy drink health risks, it will return about 94.3 million search results. Now take a moment and let that sink in. Caffeine and gym goers. Most gym goers suffer from an altered perception of body image, AKA muscle dysmorphia, which is essentially a reverse anorexia. It's an obsessiveness and compulsiveness directed towards achieving a lean and muscular physique, even at the expense of health, which leads to unhealthy eating, heavy exercise habits, and even drug taking with potentially fatal results. Caffeine being the driving force. So what's the fuss? Traditional energy drinks are associated with full-blown panic attacks, cardiac arrests, type 2 diabetes, decreased concentration, and even death. 
I mean, it's a $61.6 million market in the Czech Republic, which is dominated by the big four, Red Bull, Monster, Semtex, and Big Shock. Consumers are demanding a change. There's no healthier alternative in the Czech Republic, which forces consumers to import products from abroad. And the big four simply don't care since they care about putting profits instead of people's health. Our international competitors are Brain Tonic, New, True Brain, and Quilla Energy. So what's the solution? We introduce a green tea-based energy drink into the Czech market, which is a healthy alternative, contains low amounts of caffeine, high amounts of nootropics, and gives you no energy crash after consuming it. So basically what we're doing is we're giving our athletes the boost they need without killing our most loyal customers. So the ingredients are simple. Bacopa, creatine, and GABA focus on the muscle. The flaxseed oil focuses on heart health. Creatine and tearcreen are the powerhouse of the energy drink and coconut oil focuses on brain function among other ingredients. So our product description, basically it's a carbonated energy drink. It's all natural, has only premium ingredients and is designed to stand out. As you can see, we have coconut, strawberry, mango, and a chai. Basically, timeline since inception, uh, Envy was born in June. By July, we already had 11 MVPs completed and some taste tests conducted. In August, we launched the website. And by September, well, this month, we already have three gyms that raised pre-orders of over 15,000 euros. And we have six gyms that are ready to sign by next month. So a uh, timeline moving forward. By November, we plan on releasing the first batch of the product. By the start of the next year, we want to plan a pilot test into retail. We're in discussions with uh, a major retailer called Arbit, um, Albert in the Czech Republic. And on top of that, we want to expand into gyms in Prague and Brno. And by the end of next year, we want to have a partnership also established with Tesco. So our business model is basic. We're a B2B that focus on gym, retails, and gas stations, with retail being the cash cow, pulling in a minimum of 22000 per order. So apart from the big four, we also have Coca-Cola Energy and Tiger Energy as our main competitors in the Czech Republic. And talking about the Czech Republic, there's uh, 10.7 million of us. And out of those 10.7, 7.9 million people are active. So it's a pretty big market. We plan on launching in the biggest cities with the most people. And the demographic is going to be 18 to 30 years old, gym athletes, both male and female. Our unique selling point is that we're going to be the first mover in the Czech Republic with this type of product. We're going to utilize blockchain, the supply chain, so you as a customer know exactly what's in the product and where it comes from. And for us, it's so if there's ever a product recall, so we know which items exactly to recall. And we also have a proprietary blend, which challenges the one from our international and also national competitors. So our exit strategy, basically want to be bought out by either Coffola, Big Shock, or Coca-Cola in two to five years time in the Czech Republic for our proprietary blend. And also once we get bought out, this will allow us to expand into newer markets. So basically the A-team, that's me, I'm Nikki. I just graduated and I have a degree in high-tech entrepreneurship. On top of that, I have three years experience in the startup ecosystem. And for now, I am looking for a salesperson and someone in the marketing department to help me grow the company. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Nikki. Um, very cool. And best of luck in finding that team and making this happen. Um, up next, we have uh, Almaz Albakirov, who will be presenting Digiton.me. Almas, can you hear me? If I saw correctly, you were on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clearly now. Okay. Good day, everyone. My name is Almas. I came from Kazakhstan. And at Digiton.me, we are helping brands to get high quality uh, marketing assets in record time. Uh, let's have a look at the process uh, of communication brands with freelancers or digital agencies. Actually, the brand, they have to understand their need, do the market analysis, find freelancer or agency, prepare brief drafts, corrections, final drafts again, corrections, and the results. Oof. 
Isn't it annoying? And more annoying is that as a result, brands spend from three to six months and actually get only three ideas. And with the Digitone, we can actually eliminate the majority of these blocks. And in 48, and we claim that in 48 hours, we can provide up to 50 original ideas per company. Actually, what is the Digitone? Digitone is 48 hours competitions in the sphere of digital marketing, design, video, photo, and marketing strategy. And happily, we know how to source original ideas. Since we have experience in Kazakhstan by providing offline uh, marketing competitions with eight huge brands, 400 participants, and up to 50 original ideas per task. However, due to current situation, it is impossible to provide offline events. That's why we decided to move online. And who are these guys who are able to actually execute this idea of uh, online competitions? It's me, Almas, and my partner, Alejan, who is CTO and also the student of Harbor Space University, uh, and he has a master's degree in computer science. Uh, and also he has two years experience as a software developer uh, at TomTom Telematics. Uh, and me, uh, Almaz Albakirov, uh, student of high-tech entrepreneurship. Uh, and since I have seven years of experience in video production, we decided to think like a creator. What does it mean? If we go and look at our competitors, we can see our competitive advantages. First of all, uh, based on our customer interviews, we found out that uh, the main uh, thing about online competitions is the transparency because no one knows uh, how the competitions are judged uh, uh, because there is no feedback form and criteria provided. And the second of all is the B2B customer engagement. If you can look uh, to some of our competitors like Upwork or Fiverr, there is uh, no uh, customer engagement at all. And finally, magic of 48 hours. We're gonna run 48 hours competitions since I was participating in all of the competitions that were uh, on the web or offline. And I found out that it doesn't matter how much time, uh, uh, how much time is provided. It doesn't matter if it is one year, couple of months or one week, uh, freelancers and creators will not spend more than 48 hours to complete the task. And our advantages uh, towards to digital agencies uh, that we are scalable and um, the time that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, our business model is uh, we will charge 10,000 euros uh, per campaign and half of this money will go to the price fund and half of the money will go our company for our operational expenses. And uh, actually we used the bottom-up approach and we found out that in two years we will be able to reach uh, 1 million in revenues by running 100 tasks on our platform. And in five years, we're gonna reach uh, 20 million uh, euros in revenues by expanding our customer segment to small and medium, medium enterprises. And our milestones are the running our first online event, then uh, organizing the offline event, then uh, providing the organizing the seed round. And at the August 2021, we want to create a software as a service product uh, to expand our uh, our uh, our web our platform to small and medium enterprises. And actually. Uh, about the amount of investments uh, for our startup. Uh, it is not about the investments, it is more about the connections uh, and network that we can get from, from, from our potential partners. And finally, to be honest, for me, this project is not about the money or the problem. I think that Digiton is more about the fun as any marketing strategy or marketing channel supposed to be.
and I want to invite you to create something amazing together. Thank you. Great work, Almas. Thank you so much for, for presenting. Congratulations. Um, we have two more startup uh, presentations. And uh, before I introduce our next uh, presenter, I would just like to say that our graduation ceremony has been moved a little bit further back just so that we can uh, keep in time realistically with the schedule. So the graduation ceremony will start at 5.30 um, Central European time. Um, I see our next presenter is, uh, is already ready. Um, Marius will be presenting Vation. So Marius, if you can uh, just give me a sound check and I'll give you the green light to go. Yes, hello. How are you doing? Go for it, Marius. Great. Thank you very much, Jason. So hello, we are Vation, digital health experts that help you every single day to work on your most important asset, your body. So, oops, uh, so every single year, there are multiple millions of people signing up for a gym membership because of the guilt they feel after Christmas dinner. And this is a business model for gyms and apps like Freeletics. They make money by having people lose motivation and stop exercises, but continuing to pay all along. So just think about it, just in the Dach region, in 2019, we had a fitness market of 7 billion euro, but this left millions of unsatisfied customers. Casual Melanie is one of those unsatisfied customers. She's a typical German mom. She's 37 years old, has two kids, and a good full-time job earning her 49,000 euros a month. But at night, when she gets home, she's usually so tired that she cannot motivate herself to do anything, to do anything besides just sitting there. So she just falls asleep with a glass of wine in her hand. But, and that's a huge but, Melanie is extremely frustrated that she cannot motivate herself to do something because she knows that it's very important for her health. All her colleagues and friends are already complaining about the back pain and also the unhealthy amount of weight they are gaining every single year. And she sees it coming too. So one of the nights when Melanie was sitting at home on her couch uh, after work, she was scrolling through Instagram and she saw one of our ads your personal trainer for 149 euros per month. She decided to give it a try. So we hooked her up with her personal trainer, Lucas. And then during the first video call, Lucas tried to get to know Melanie in detail about her physique, but most importantly about the motivation, the actual trigger why she wanted to move, why she wanted to start doing sports now. With that knowledge, he would then create the first training plan and then the essence of our product motivate her and nudge her every single day into doing at least something, those at least five to 10 minutes per day of moving. Now, 14 weeks in, Melanie is so proud of herself because she has been moving for more than 10 weeks every single day already. And this does not only have an impact on her health and her good mood, but also on all the people around her. For this personal trainer, Melanie is currently paying 149 euros per month. We have a customer acquisition cost of 150 euros per month uh, per customer. And with a lifetime value of 540, this uh, counts to a ratio of four to one. Now, the fitness market, as you heard already beforehand, is insanely huge. Uh, if you look at the Dach region already with the 7.1 billion euros. To start off, we want to tackle the other 3 million Melanies that live in the Dach region. And if we then assume a continuous conversion rate of 4%, we're looking at a, a beachhead market of 160 million in the next three years. And now I want to take one step back. If we think about the history of personal tra uh, training, it has been an extremely human driven approach. Now, over the past couple of years, this has changed to a pure tech-driven approach. Now, we want to tackle the spot directly in, in the middle, where we have the humans, the personal trainers, who are enabled by tech to then uh, service the customers with a user-to-coach ratio of 150 to 1. And one thing for us is for sure, that over the lifetime of our company, we will stick to the human interaction because this is the single only thing that we identified really motivates the other people to stick to their plan of doing sports. 
We are a team of three founders, two of us already um, with a successful uh, exit beforehand with Evo Park. We're then accompanied by uh, an international experienced team, primarily also from the German startup scene. I want to highlight three people specific, uh, specifically with Laurencio as our engineering lead, who was beforehand head of um, tech at Yelp and also Oracle. Danny, head of product, prior head of product at N26 and Matthew, Canadian 30 under 30 developer. Our investors uh, we have already on board uh, are also from renowned uh, European companies such as uh, SumUp, Bonial, Dubsmash, Vaha, Tier, Delivery Hero. And our advisors primarily help us with the tech decisions and also the academic approach towards psychology of how we can really drive the people to do more sports. What we're asking you now, after our pre-seed round already in April, we're now looking for a bridge round to then close our seed round of 2.5 million beginning of next year. This bridge round now consists of 500,000 in convertibles. At this current stage, uh, September, we have 75 paying customers with whom we have gathered an incredible amount of user feedback of our current uh, MVP, which is very low fidelity, no tech involved, only Azana, the project management tool to provide the, um, to provide the training plans. Now with the tech team on board, we want to develop the mobile application to then grow to 500 paying customers and then monthly recurring revenue of 75,000 euros to then show in cohorts the my nine month retention. And with those people then have the chance to explore also potential partnerships with health insurance companies, because this is probably the next big thing also within the fitness industry. Thank you very much. We are Vation, digital health experts that help you every single day to work on your most important asset, your body. Super impressive, Marius. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see how far as well this has come and I'm sure it's gonna be a huge success in the future. So wishing you the best. Um, we are finally down to our last presentation. Um, we have Khaled, and Jonathan, I'm not sure if Jonathan will be with us today, but I definitely see Khaled and he will be presenting his startup, um, Ojos. So Khaled, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Very cool, I can hear you too. Um, I, you want to try sharing your screen? All right. Can you see it? Uh, yes, I can see right. it. Okay, Go. so uh, as you have heard in the Stephanie presentation, uh, our population is aging and caregiving is becoming a more common job right now. And caregiving isn't easy because it comes with, uh, it comes with its own problems, daily stress and, uh, and some health problems and many, uh, and many other problems that you uh, will face when you care for an elderly. But you do not have a choice because elderies are vulnerable to many risks. Falling physical violence or verbal violence from the external caregiver and fire maybe because you forget something and uh, of the uh, maybe because of uh, of dementia, but uh, and also the response time your response time can be different between life and death. If uh, the the faster the faster you do, uh, the faster you respond to for example, for, for example falling, the more chance that the uh, elderly would be able to survive or with less damage. So what are the current solutions that caregivers use? So one of them are wearables, which are annoying, let's, uh, let's admit this. And also wearables depend on the caregiver. So maybe they do not wear it or maybe they do not like it. So they will remove it. And it also has to be waterproof and other things. Also radars, which radars are cheap, but objects and other wireless signals interfere with it. So it's not actually very accurate. Uh, another solution is sensors, which are expensive and also they are specific. Uh, they are specialized to some specific risks. So there are a sensor for falling like a mattress and there is a sensor for going in and going out and sensor for fire. So they are not general, uh, generalized. But the most common used solution is cameras. Uh, they are very general. You just put the camera and you have to monitor it daily and or uh, all, all the time. And this is a problem because it makes you stressed and also you can 
you can actually you have a, a high chance of missing an important event like folding. So here comes Ojos, where we boot cam uh, computer vision uh, to analyze the videos that the camera re record. And when I when I mention co computer vision, uh, actually the models we have uh, the models that we developed we started developing it in the course neural network and computer vision by Sergi and Ale uh, by Professor Sergi and Alexi uh, in the university. And back then for the falling part only the falling part model only we had like we got some good accuracy. But then actually now we have improved these uh, these numbers. And also we have other mo other modules. So it, it's not just fall detections that we have now. We also have face detection where can, where, where if he, if the user said that this camera is next to the door, we can say that okay the the elderly went out of the home or went in. And also we have people counter where we can uh, detect if the if there are a lot of pe a lot of people in in the home. Maybe they are not invited, but the external caregiver is inviting people. And also, let's talk more about the. So this was technical side. Let's talk more about the market side. Uh, the market side. And when I talk about the market, I have to mention the courses by Don, and not just the demo day bootcamp, but also the other uh, the other one uh, for uh, uh, entrepreneurship, where we had uh, where we started uh, learning about talking to customers and validating the customer need. And as, as, as I said before, uh, our population is aging. So for example, in Asia, in, two, in year 2000, only about 6% were over 65. But by the year 2050, it will become 18%. And another 18% will be, will be caregivers. So 18% elderly and 18% uh, caregivers. And in Europe, it will, even, it will be even more. That will be like uh, twenty-eight percent, and it's not just the caregiving uh, caregivers are and elderly. Camera manufacturers actually recognize that this is this is an important customer segment, and they put some like uh, some ads for them to target them. Like if you use our cameras, it will help you. They do not provide analytics, actual analytics. It, it's just a camera, but they recognize that their cameras provide them some value and our plan so our plan is not to like uh, is not to compete with established players in there but actually to provide the technology and the analytics to established camera manufacturers uh, as uh, so we are going to use their own uh, their, uh, their uh, market and their reach and only provide them uh, more value in their uh, in their camera, so uh, so they will be able to attract customers. And so we will provide the technology, and they will provide their own cameras. And we already have we already uh, made an interview with a CTO in a, in a big camera manufacturer called Trezor, which sells one in every five cameras in Russia, and it also sells in uh, in Spain, Turkey, and China. So the team that is building this is Jonathan Hurl, who, who was working in the unit 8200, which is like in the IDF, which is like the NSA. And Michael Fadel, who was two times world finalist in the International Collegiate Programming Contest, which is one of the most prestigious programming competitions for college students. And I also worked in Orange, Orange Telecom uh, R&D labs, and actually Alexi, who was one of our professors in, in one of the, uh, in one of our courses, uh, have agreed to become our mentor and have mentor uh, have been mentoring us since then. So, what is uh, our plan uh, next? Uh, we have already participated in a hackathon uh, hosted by Biotorch, which is one of the biggest libraries for computer uh, for uh, machine learning in general. And we are uh, exp we are waiting for the winner's announcement in October first. We are also we we ac we were accepted to join the uh, to participate in the uh, CERN internship student program. Uh, it will start on uh, in, the, in the middle of this uh, of this month uh, of the next month. I'm sorry. And we 
uh, we would uh, we would like to ask for uh, one uh, one hundred and fifty thousand euros uh, as to cover our own uh, our own salaries for the for the year and also to be able to attract uh, some uh, some camera manufacturers in order to uh, in order to partner with them. So help us change the life of the lives of caregivers and makes your uh, and makes the world as uh, the aging population uh, in, in, in AIDS. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Khaled. Um, really, really impressive, um, both concept project um, and of course how far you, you've come. So very excited for your future. Best of luck with that. Um, that is the last of our presentations for our 2020 demo day. Um, it is Currently, um, we will begin. We will be moving to our graduation ceremony um, in just a couple of minutes. So we will have one or two minutes um, of a break, and uh, just for everyone to to freshen up a bit. And then we will be moving to our uh, graduation ceremony, starting with greetings and opening speech. Um, it's been a real pleasure watching all of our graduates and seeing how far um, they've come and how much they've taken advantage of all the opportunities presented to them, despite the fact that it's been such a, an unconventional, strange and challenging year. So really well done. Um, and uh, we all admire your adaptability and your perseverance and uh, your dedication to success. So thank you so much and we will see you very soon. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Welcome to the graduation ceremony. We're excited to have you here. Great to be here. Welcome, everyone, from, from all over the world joining us. We're so excited for the next one and a half hours of the graduation to come. 
Perfect. So I'm very happy to have uh, Michel and Felix um, from the Harbor Space team who will be helping me conduct the ceremony. Uh, we're going to start off with the opening speech from uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Harbor Space University, uh, Svetlana Velikanova. Uh, Svetlana, can you hear us? Hi, guys. I, I hope I can. can yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. And we can see you. Awesome. You're so beautiful over there. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. So should I start or should I? Absolutely. The floor is yours. Great. Uh, dear guests, dear parents, um, dear students, of course, and uh, everybody from all around the world who is joining us today. I mean, it's, uh, it's a huge pleasure to um, to sort of have you here to share with you uh, the work that had been carried out in Harvard Space for the last uh, five years since the university was launched. Uh, of course, this year, as every year, is very special. I mean, if you look at the students that performed today uh, from all uh, the disciplines that we have, I mean, you, you know, from the case studies, from the portfolios, from the startups, uh, I mean, you've performed so well. I mean, you've outperformed yourself, in my opinion. I mean, for me, it's always, um, uh, you know, such a shivering, uh, you know, moment to, to kind of hear uh, your last speeches. And, you know, personally, I never know what you guys are going to say. Uh, I try to kind of be as surprised as the guests uh, that are watching us today. I want to thank you guys for all your incredible efforts that you have brought out uh, while we were at Harbor Space for every day that you have given us so much joy. I mean, you are such a fantastic group of people. I mean, this speech of mine, I mean, it has to be fully about you, about each one of you, because for us, um, everything that matters is whether or not Harper Space was able to get what you already have actually inside of you uh, out to the world and give you all the uh, sort of necessary resources and environment and, uh, you know, the confidence and also, um, you know, surround you with people that can help you to carry that innate talent of yours out to the world and further. And guys, to be honest, I want to share with you my own experience when I was graduating, uh, you know, in 2005, uh, more than 15 years ago. Uh, I, I, I had no idea I would start a university, obviously, right? I, I kind of thought about it at that time already, but I, I, I didn't know if my dream would come true, but everything that happened to me back in my university in Finland actually, um, you know, formated me and, and, and planted a seed that only manifested many, many years later when I... I kind of felt I, I was ready to take on a certain leadership um, for other sort of, you know, for other people in the world. You know, of course, it's very ambitious, right, like to start a university. So today I wanted to speak about a few things that really helped me to become who I became. And I hope that this kind of words will also uh, be useful for you. Um, so as you know, I've been uh, working for more than 10 years in investment banking, and obviously it's a, you know, it's a very interesting field at the time uh, that I joined it uh, because it was full of, you know, uh, you know creativity and, uh, you know, was at the cutting age of everything. And I learned a lot of things in my job, uh, as many probably or more things than I learned at the university. Um, but, you know, one thing that really, really made me who I am, and I always tried at Harbor Space uh, when we designed the program and when we um, select the teachers. I mean, I want you to know that every single action that had been taken, that you've been part of, was carefully designed. There was no surprises, to be honest. I mean, sometimes we experiment, and as we say, we always try to kind of surprise you on the upside. But one of the key things I would uh, I would like to talk about today is talent, right? And, and you know, we always kind of, I mean, this person is talented, the other person, you know, you can see your classmates, some of them are extremely talented, some of them are extremely hardworking, and you kind of, you know, you kind of, um, 
you know, the life will show where that goes. You know, you might be not as talented as somebody sitting next to you in UI, for example, which is pretty difficult, right? But, uh, you know, if you work hard, I think, um, you know, the effort will, you know, will pay off and you might kind of, you know, go even further than the person or the people that you've experienced here at Harperspace. Because a lot of you, when you came, uh, I mean, you were really good at what you were doing back in school or, you know, back in your craft. And then suddenly in Harbor Space, you could see your classmates that were, you know, super talented in something. And, you know, the talent was so far uh, from kind of, you know, uh, you, that you would think, oh, my God, I will never be as good as that guy or I will never be as good as your teachers. I just, you know, want to give a uh, sort of this uh, word of warning that, you know, when you think this way, because you see your teachers like uh, Irene Pereira, uh, you know, you remember that it's 20 years of hard work and experience that you're witnessing. So if you put as much effort into what you're going to do from now on, trust me, you will surpass your teachers. Why am I saying that? Because I'm very sure uh, of, of the method of Harvard space. And I, I want to give you this confidence level uh, that nobody else has in the world. And it, it doesn't grow in, for, you know, on trees, right, this confidence. It is because we know that we are giving you three times more in volume. I'm not even speaking about the uh, sort of the relevance, you know, in, in terms of content than any university on the planet. So you guys have been trained three times more than anybody else in the world. Just remember that when you go out, don't be afraid of any challenge. Be super self-confident. Just present yourself and follow through, right? Like keep, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you've, you've, you know, our job was to get you to that stage when you just never stop anymore, you know? It's like a vaccine, you know? You never, never again will will, you know, will be the person that came to Harvard space before that formative year or for some of you three years, right? So I want to say that talent is, you know, I don't remember who said that, but somebody clearly said that talent without ambition is like a bird without wings. Remember to be ambitious, in my opinion. I mean, it's very important to be very ambitious. And, you know, you really don't know today, as I didn't know 15 years ago, uh, how far I can go, right? So just just give yourself that benefit of a doubt. Just go, just go and try. There is no other, um, there's no other kind of method in this planet as far as like, you know, my experience goes. So remember to be very, very ambitious and pull a lot of effort. As I say, always effort for me is more important, maybe even than the talent, right? And the other thing that I also want you to know, you guys got the vision here at Harvard Space. I think, I think all of you now understand and you know when you present I can feel because I've seen you presenting a year ago right like when you just came and this was like Kamran's class you're the hero and you, you you guys were doing something but without fully understanding what you were doing now when you're presenting I mean you fully understand what you're doing and trust me very few people on earth have this kind of common sense and you know this kind of uh, you know, very specific uh, way of dealing with problems. And so your problem solving skills are also at the extreme level. And I'm just telling you, don't forget that and keep learning, please. Because of course, right now you are at the peak of your kind of intellectual performance and you've been surrounded by that environment. You will get out of there and you will see in many companies, they will not want that. You know, if you join companies, some comp depending on the company, you might be kind of alone in that thinking, because, you know, people that, you know, that came from Harvard State, there were a few people, right? Like, I mean, not everybody had been there, but of course there's other people, but I mean, really you don't know today who you're gonna end up with working. But remember this feeling of, you know, finding your team, finding your kind of tribe, you know, finding that environment where you flourish and you perform and that environment, you will remember it, your body will remember it, I think, because you've been through at Harbor Space through this experience when everything is kind of supportive and everything works and you're in a learning mode and you just have no limits. And with that, I think I've finished. I, I really, guys, I mean, you I mean, you will be my heart uh, for all my life, every one of you. I remember, you know, each one of you, not only by the name, but by who you are, your characters, your talents. 
um, remember that I'm always here for you. We are always here for you, all the team. I mean, you mean so much to us. I mean, everything that, you know, I live and breathe because of you guys. So thank you very much for kind of trusting us, for being uh, who you are, uh, for being very authentic, for, for, for walking with us this journey, which was a fantastic journey. And I have to say, and for me, again, we have these arguments with Irene, which batch was the best? I think that this batch was like, for me, one of the best batches I mean, we've ever had. Of course, the first batch, Irene says it's the first batch because, you know, of course the first ones were absolutely crazy to join a university that was like, you know, nobody knew that university. I mean, even I wasn't sure, you know, whether we would be doing, but I knew I would do everything in my powers. So that's always sort of the rule, right? Do everything in your powers and then just leave it up to the, to the chance, you know? And I mean, chance will be on your, on your side. So with that, I guess I will leave it to, to the team. I want to say thank you for the team of Harvest Space. Uh, that is a, the most fantastic and the most talented and the most hardworking team on the planet. You guys are, I mean, again, for me, uh, it's such a pleasure. I've never worked with such a talented te team ever in my life. Even when I was working in banking and like all these people were paid millions of dollars, but they were not even... 10% as creative or as hardworking or as crazy as you are. And I cheers to that craziness. And guys, please never forget Harbor Space. And I really beg you to come back and teach at some point, right? But become that professional that, you know, raises the bar and, you know, and, and don't forget to do something for the others that you have been kind of given the chance to get here at Harbor Space. So love you guys. Thank you so much. And I don't know. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Svetlana, for those inspiring words today and uh, every time throughout the year and your inspiring actions that brought all of us here together. I'm a bit sad that my generation is losing that battle against the new generation, <laughs> I have to say. But uh, <laughs> I know that we can, uh, we can bring it up again with uh, one very special person that appeared throughout the year frequently, um, talking about Hannes Chopra, who probably touched all of your uh, journeys throughout Harvest Space in, in quite an impactful way and quite a special way. So I'm very happy to, to have him here today to, to give some words to you uh, for this graduation. Hannes. I can Hi. see you. I Hi, can see everyone. <laughs> so this is your day. I got this hat for you guys. I can't put it on you and I don't deserve to wear it. So I just put it aside. But uh, um, just to share with you uh, how grateful I am that um, I've been in some way part of, uh, of your journey. And um, yes, Shoria. This was the best batch. Not that I, uh, I was, I was surprised that this message came so late, but finally you send it. And no offense to all the others, uh, Felix and the batches before. Um, but this was the best batch. I, I tell you why. Um, if you look around, I mean, this was remarkable 12 months. Um, if we look at what happened in the world, uh, it's a little bit upside down. Um, there's strong disruption. There's a lot of unclarity. And um, there's some craziness going on. I mean, whether you look at politics or leadership in different ways, um, a lot of strange things are happening. And this might at times be disheartening. And I remember very well uh, when we met in March for our online course and um, I was contemplating and I realized how frustrating this experience was for a number of you. Um, but uh, I have to tell you, I'm really impressed. I've been following a couple of the presentations. I can just say, wow. I mean, that's incredible. Incredible project you came up with. I'm always happy when I see those projects uh, you have for the elderly because this gives me hope. I mean, I'm, I'm part of this generation. So um, I know I've been taken care of in some way. Um, no, but all your projects and how they have developed is incredible. But what is even more so 
I'm truly impressed the journey you have taken over those couple of months. I mean, I remember some of you um, being very shy to speak, at least in my presence, um, or being very stubborn to, to when you were talking. Both is not good. And now to see where you have come is really impressive. It's truly, truly impressive. And I want to congratulate you on this, on the journey you've taken. But even more so, I think with the experience and um, uh, thanks to the vision and execution of Svetlana of uh, setting up such a university and gathering such uh, great people around her, you have gone through a very different experience. So what I said in the beginning, what is happening in the world, you are truly privileged, much, much more than probably you think. Because you have gone through an experience which is closer to life and closer to what the world is expecting from you than you might think. And much more ready than probably any other educational institution. Um, and I want you just to remember, um, I mean, you know me, if I can like drag this on for, 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 for long and like uh, talk without stop. That's another thing, Shoria, we have in common. Um, so um, uh, you don't mind me picking on you, right? We, um, uh, oh, no. uh, <laughs> I, uh, I want to leave you with just uh, three small thoughts. So the thought number one is, I hope you discovered in this time in Harbor Space, the power of learning. Uh, make sure that learning becomes your best friend, that learning becomes your default option every single day, not once in 10 years, once in a year, once in a month, every single day. And whatever it is, whatever it is, stop thinking that there are a few things which make sense in your life and as close they are to what you call business, the more important they are, no. Whether you want to do parachuting, paragliding, Uh, skateboarding, sock, whatever. Trust in the universe that whatever you learn at some point will be very useful to you, but learn. So the power of learning is, is, is my first topic. And in your generation, it's truly important that you keep on learning, learning, learning. And this by itself is a huge competitive advantage you would have to anyone in the world. The second power I hope you discovered, those who have been in buddy groups and those who haven't um, think of creating one, the power of community. Look at the end, and it's funny that um, a small virus has to teach us this, but in the end, we are all members of one big family. So creating community is actually something very, very normal. Never hesitate to create community wherever you are. And it doesn't take much. As you might have realized in the body groups, you reach out to people in an open, vulnerable, open way. Chances are high that they will, this will be reciprocated in a way that you say, wow, that was incredible. So don't underestimate the power of community. Uh, it really helps you to go through life. It really helps you to see things from a different perspective and to get uh, bigger than you really are because you get additional insights. And the third power I want to refer to is um, the power of, of self. Those of you who suffered through my three weeks of limitless human becoming, <clears throat> you know how convinced I am. I hope I could infect a few of you. You are truly limitless. And this is not just some, some blah, blah. This is just a fact. Humans, are on, our only limitation is our thoughts and emotions and a few physical things, but that's it. Otherwise, there's no limitation. And unfortunately, so often we use our thoughts and emotions to limit us, not to elevate us. So I wish you to understand really how this limitlessness can really become your closest ally the moment you think in terms of limitlessness and what can be done and what else you could achieve. And the best way actually in a world like this, I described in the beginning is to go crazy. Try crazy stuff. Because the good news is in a world which is that much changing, 
there is a place for crazy stuff. In a steady world, in a disruptive world, uh, there's a lot of room for this, uh, for this uh, craziness. And um, I want to conclude and I mean, not only wishing you the best, uh, the best I can, but first of all, thank you for um, having been part of my life and I hope um, this will continue. You have my whereabouts, you even know where I live, uh, in which city. Um, so thank you for this. Uh, you have helped me to learn and to improve and to get a lot of good insights. Um, I wish you also that you um, find your way, way, whatever it is. And I always wish you that you believe in yourself. And, uh, you know, next, next week is uh, 2nd of October. It's the 151st birthday of Mahatma Gandhi. And... Um, uh, in, in, in a couple of things um, Mahatma Gandhi thought and said um, uh, I find truly inspiring and one of um, yes Gandhi Gandhi exactly and one of the um, you know that his belief was in, 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 in Satyagraha a lot of people said that there is like non-violence but non-violence was just actually the result of something else Satyagraha means uh, stick to the truth, hold on to the truth. And what I told you before, those three things, these are just the truths of life. So I wish you to hold on to the truth that uh, you are powerful yourself, you're powerful in community, and um, you're powerful when you move on and move on and move on and learn. And I think it was last year, two years ago, um, I referred to not by coincidence, uh, the most favorite song of Mahatma Gandhi was a song by Rabindranath Tagore, Indian poet, who got the Nobel Prize of Literature in 1913, 1 -3. And his favorite song was one where the words are, um, uh, if you walk and, you, and people do not listen and do not follow you, then walk alone, walk alone, walk alone. If you talk and people do not listen and do not follow, then talk alone, talk alone, talk alone, and so on and so on. And um, well, to spice a little bit uh, up the, the, the Zoom graduation, I really regret that I can't uh, hug all of you. Um, I will sing a few lines of this song, um, which is called Jodi Tordak Shonike Una Ashe. Are there any Bengalis here? Um, uh, anybody who, who knows this song? A little bit, yeah? Okay, so you can sing along and unmute yourself. Uh, it's anyhow only about uh, the intention. Uh, ah, great, here, yeah, wow. That's a great room here. Fantastic. Okay, I'll go. Jodi tore dak shone ke una she tobe ekla cholo re jodi tore dak shone ke una she tobe ekla cholo re ekla cholo ekla cholo ekla cholo ekla cholo re ekla cholo ekla cholo ekla cholo ekla cholo re jodi tore dak shone ke una Guys, my congratulations to your graduation. You rock. Thank you so much, Hannes, for your, for your great speech and for those words that I think will stick in all our heads for quite a while. And uh, I also remembered that song from... I don't know which, uh, which of your presentations it was, but it also stuck in my head. Uh, thank you for waking up the audience. Um, and thank you for your visionary action throughout the year. I think it has a huge impact on, on everyone who's studying here. So thank you very much. With that, I think um, it's time for, for a special announcement about something that we've been working on uh, in, in the past months. And it's because education is just very close to all our hearts. And uh, therefore, I think most of us also enjoy bringing education to other people, bringing education to a different generation. And we all know about the importance of tech in, in our world today. 
That's why we want to invite you to have a look at Leaks of Code, a new completely online offering that we have for kids in high school ages uh, to study maths and computer science in a completely new approach that's fun, competitive. Um, just explore it. Maybe it's something for someone who you think should start getting more into the world of tech. With that, we're ready to start in the academic part of our graduation ceremony today. Mitch, can you join me? Yeah, of course. Hey, everyone again. Um, it's been such a pleasure to listen to your presentations, to see your progress. And it's truly an honor for us to, to have been sharing this year with you. And we get to now present the honors of this year, which means that we'll be showing the top 25% of our class. We will start from the extraordinary people to the super extraordinary people. And what we're, I'm gonna ask from everyone now is we have a screen right in front of us where we can actually see you. So I'm gonna ask everyone to start turning off their cameras so we can just see the screen, how we start seeing your faces. And once we mention your name, uh, if you wish to say a sentence or to say thank you, we would love to, to just hear from you. Okay, so let's get it started. Um, we're gonna start with the cum laude honors, which means the bottom of the top 25% of the class. And I would like to start by congratulating Maria Kiprani for her cum laude honors and for the amazing journey she has shared with us at Harbor Space. Maria, any words you'd like to share? Yeah, um, thank you so much. It was really, uh, I think, a truly, truly amazing experience, not only for the kind of educational purposes, but like the people that I met and the experiences that I've had with everyone. I think I'll never forget it. And I really hope I will come back in Barcelona and visit every single one of you and see all of you. And big thank you to everyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for the kind words. Congratulations. Good, for our next honor, uh, we have MD Nurasaman. Uh, we want to congratulate you too, MD. Uh, you, you were a lighthouse inside this university and your smile really, really motivated us every day. So any words you would like to share with us? Thanks a lot, Mitch. Uh, thanks a lot for the year and, and the help that you've been. Uh, and as always, you, you are the Batman of Harbor Space. So <laughs> thanks for that. Thank you, MD. Good for our next honor. Um, we have Elena Rupkova. Thank you for those amazing hugs that you've given all of us at the university for always spreading love and, and just once again spreading love, Elena. And I hope you continue doing this throughout, throughout your life. Uh, any words you would like to share with us? Yes, thank you very much. I love this year. I love all of you. I want to share all my hugs with every one of you, but unfortunately you are far away from me. <laughs> but at least I can give hugs to her now. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. For our next honor, we have Shannon Ray Baring. Shannon, congratulations. Uh, we've had you here for, for a long time. We've got to share a lot of years with you. Uh, is there any words you would like to share with us? Um, yeah, I just like, wow, thank you very much for, I mean, I, you, you said that, uh, you said it, I've been here for a while and I've just been through uh, a lot of the major things that this, this university has gone through and all of the people that I've met are just, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, but uh, I can surely say that uh, my heart is full. Thank you guys. Thank you, Shannon. Good. For our next honor, we have Ahmed Gaffer. Ahmed, congratulations also, and thank you also for, for coming from so far and, and bringing also that light that you brought into Harvard Space. Are you with us and would you like to say some words? Yes, um, thank you very much Harbor Space and the, the whole Harbor Space team for making this year so amazing and incredible. It truly changed my life. This one year was amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good, so now we're gonna to move to the top 15% of the class for the magna cum laude honors. And the first honor that we would like to, to give, and once again, it's our honor to give this kind of honors, is to Ritvik Rander. Congratulations, Ritvik. I think we'll be hearing the claps from that huge room you have, and you will be able to share some, some words with us. Are you there, Ritvik? 
Can you guys see me? Yeah. Yes, we can see oh you God, here. Huge, huge, huge honor. Thank you, guys. Uh, couldn't have done it without this amazing class behind me. But, yeah, so happy. Thank you. Congratulations, Rithvi. Good. Uh, for next honor, we have Maurice. Uh, Maurice, as a high tech entrepreneurship student, you've really defined what high tech entrepreneurship is, and and we really, really appreciate you for that. And uh, do you have any words that you would like to share? Yeah, just all the best from Germany. We've got a little party here. <laughs> <laughs> and hope to see all of you guys in one year from now for a proper beer. Until then, stay healthy. <laughs> Good, and congratulations. Uh, perfect. We go to our next honor, Javier Roballedo. We've had the pleasure working with you. Uh, it's also, as a student, as a co-worker, you've shown extraordinary things. So any words that you would like to share with us? Yeah, I mean, it's been an amazing experience. Thank you to all my classmates, my teachers, and now my co-workers. Uh, I mean, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Javier. Good, uh, Dimitri Selenki. I believe he, he didn't manage to join the call, but once again, it's, it's an honor. It was an honor having you during our time at the university. Thank you, Dimitri. Good, and so we go to the top 5% of the class. Those people that really kind of show extraordinary results and have you put something in your mind and you, you work hard enough, you, you will reach it. So the first honor we'd like to present is to Stephanie Waitzman. Congratulations, Steph, congratulations. Uh, any words you would like to share with us? It's been an amazing journey. <laughs> Sorry, too many screens here, but it's been an amazing journey and I'm so happy to be part of Harbor Space through this time. Thank you so much to everyone at Harbor Space and to all my student spacers. See you soon. Congratulations, Stefania. Good, then we have John, John Sarur. Congratulations, John. This is evidence how far the heart you have and the brain will take you. So congratulations. Any words you would like to share with us? Um, thank you so much for this. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone, Harvest Space, all my colleagues, and I wish to see you all soon, very soon. <laughs> no. Good. For next, uh, summa cum laude, uh, we have Marius. Marius has also been with you, with us for, for a long time, sharing this journey. And congratulations, Marius. You've excelled both in data science and high tech entrepreneurship, uh, a truly integral and T shaped presentation. So, any words you would like to share with us? Thank you very much, all of you. So uh, it was really a great time uh, over the last two years. I uh, have met uh, many different people. Unfortunately, some of them already left after the first year. Felix luckily stayed there. So hi to Felix as well. And uh, the two years, yeah, meant really a lot. A lot of uh, life-changing events happened. So thank you everyone who was part of this journey and for everyone also watching on the screens at home. I really enjoyed being with you and thank you very much. Thank you, Marius, thank you. And lastly, uh, I must say this is the, the first time this has happened in Harvard Space. I am super, super honored to present the award, not only for summa cum laude, or the first person that has finished the university journey with a perfect GPA, has surprised its faculty, has surprised its students, has it surprised our staff, and I believe the impact that she will keep carrying across the university and across everything she works on during her life. I am so, so honored to present the last summa cum laude to Daniela Guevara. Congratulations, Annie. <laughs> Congratulations to, to you. And as the highest honor, we're actually super honored to now give the floor to you to, to hear from you and your valedictorian speech and, and for you to share some beautiful words with us. Good. Tell me when you're ready, Danny. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. Good afternoon, dear faculty, friends, family, and most of all, the fellow in graduating class of 2020. Um, first, I just want to take a moment to thank our loved ones for being here with us today and for being a source of love and support throughout this whole journey from day one. I feel very humbled to be speaking here today, but I am also very proud to have finalized my master's degree here at Harbor Space. 
And this year gave me the most valuable lessons I've ever learned about self-discovery. I remember how scared I was when I first got here, feeling so overwhelmed and confused about my own skills and my potential career path because I decided to study interaction design without knowing a single thing about design. And you see, I am an overthinker. And as such, I tend to get caught up in possible scenarios of things that haven't even happened yet. And it really frustrated me that I didn't really know what my passion was or what I really wanted to do after school ended. And Harbor Space not only formed me as an interaction designer, but it taught me that my instinct is the most wonderful superpower I have. And it showed me how to be the best version of myself, putting my heart into every project and decision that I made. So fellow graduates, if there's anything I would like for you to take with you wherever you go is this, always, take the, always have the courage to follow your heart and your intuition. Own your own art, own your own future and write your own story. Whatever you do, don't let the negativity of people projecting their own self doubts on you distract you from your focus and on your personal goals. Remember that the beauty of your own growth is to be able to let go and trust that everything happens for a reason. I will always be grateful for Harbor Space for making me feel at home, for offering all of the kindness and support I needed, for encouraging my curiosity. Thank you for allowing me to learn su from such admirable teachers and mentors and for helping me meet the most amazing friends whom I will very, miss very, very much. Guys, you're all incredible and brilliant and unique. And I want to thank you for making this one of the most amazing years of my life. And please don't be afraid to explore what truly excites you. Make as much mistakes as you can, as you can embrace them and learn from them. Even if things don't turn out to be how you expected, sometimes losing can be the, an even greater motivator for bigger wins. And please never ever compare yourself to anyone else. As a very wise Harvard space teacher once told us, don't worry too much about the results. Just enjoy the process as much as you can. I just want to leave you all with a quote by T.L.S. Eliot, who said that only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Thank you and congratulations to everyone. <laughs>
Congratulations also, Catalina and Sagan, for your journey in the Bachelor in Cybersecurity. Do you want to share some words? Thank you. Thank you very much. It was, uh, has been a long journey, but we're at the end of it. And it was, was a pleasure. And yes, I'm super happy for this new journey. Thank you very much for everyone. Congratulations, Catalina. Congratulations. Uh, next we have our Bachelor in Cybersecurity, Pranav Joy. Congratulations, Pranav. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank the Academy for this honor. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, that was a joke, but I really li loved my time here. It was wonderful. I'd like to thank my parents for choosing to send an 18 year old me to way far away into Barcelona and have an education that was fulfilling and worthwhile. And yeah, I'm not going to take too much time, but yeah, thanks everyone at Harbor Space for all your time and thank you. Thank you, Brenna. And congratulations for achieving a Bachelor in Computer Science to Chu Min Fan. Are you here with us? Um, yeah, I'm actually here. So um, thank you very much. I actually learned a lot as well in Harbor Space and nice meeting all of you. It's pretty sad that we can't meet right now, but I guess in the future. So hope you're all doing well. And we hope we see you, we see you in the future again, Riva. It was really nice having your company here. Good for our next, we want to announce another bachelor in computer science, Joban Belanek. Congratulations, Joban. Are you here with us and would you like to share? Uh, yeah, I am. I, I just want to say thank you for the amazing three years. Yeah. It's been really fun. Thank you to all my classmates, uh, to all the teachers that put in all the hard work, and to all the faculty that did such an amazing job. Yeah. Congratulations, Jovan. For another Bachelor in Computer Science, we want to congratulate Nishit Shah. <laughs> Are you with us, Nishit? Okay, maybe, maybe not this moment. <laughs> Good. Then we go to the next one, Bachelor in Computer Science, Nathaniel Remy. I know Nathaniel is not going to be able to, to be here right now to give a speech, but congratulations, Nathaniel. And another bachelor, we congratulate Olivia Engelhardt for the Bachelor in Interaction Design. Congratulations, Olivia. Are you there? Hi. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, I really, I just want to thank everyone that's been with me throughout my journey, through my three years at this university. And yeah, I love you all and I hope you're doing well. And we love you back, Olivia. It was a beautiful journey to share with you. Congratulations. Thank you. For Bachelor in High Tech Entrepreneurship, Nicholas Ivanovi. Congratulations, Nicholas. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know how I graduated. I just kept doing stuff and uh, it kept working, but uh, I want to thank everyone at Harbor Space and uh, all my classmates for uh, three amazing years. Yeah, thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations for completing math as a second language to Lev Cesar Hatamale <laughs> Altai. Sorry for the name for pronunciation, but are you there to, to share some words with us? So we'll go to the next one. <laughs> Uh, also for completing the math second language, we have Nividita Nyongri. It was a pleasure once having you in school. I think I saw you around. Are you there? Hi, Mitch. I'm here. Yeah. Some words you want to share with us? Yes. Thank you for the amazing year. Thank you for taking all my requests for the courses I wanted. And thank you all. Thanks, Miguel. And yes, that's all. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Also, congratulations for completing math as a second language to Nicolas Paroca. Congratulations, Nicolas. Are you there? I don't think I see you. Okay, we'll go to the next one. And also for the math second language, Giancarlo Vetti, congratulations on completing this foundational level. Would you like to share some words if you're here with us? Okay, we'll go to the next one. Great. Uh, congratulations for completing the master in cybersecurity to, to Do Tuan and Tran. I only know your brief name, but are you here to share some words with us? Are you there, Ben? No? Congratulations, anyways. And we, we send you warm hugs from Barcelona. 
For masculine computer science, we want to congratulate Alijan Ahmed Kaliyev. Congratulations, Alijan. Uh, are you here with us in the call? And would you like to share some words? Mm, yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much. Mm, it's been a pleasure for the for this whole two years. Mm, yeah, thanks. That's it. Pleasure. Congratulations, Alijan. And congratulations to our team member, Nada Luch, for completing her master in digital marketing. I'm so happy to work with you. <laughs> I don't think Nada uh, will be in the call, but you, congratulations, Nada, and looking forward to keep working with you. Uh, for also master in digital marketing, we have Afonso Rodriguez de Guiba Egama. Uh, Afonso, are you here with this call? Some words you would like to share? Yeah, I believe he was not going to be able to join, so we will continue the war. And congratulations for another mass in digital marketing to our second amazing teammate along these people, Annie Marie Frischer. Thank you so much. Congratulations, congratulations. Annie. And we've seen you around. Well, so thank you, sure. everyone. Uh, it's been an amazing year, and I'm super excited to stay on with the Harbor Space team and continue the journey. But I just want to thank the faculty and the teacher and my peers because I wouldn't have done it without any of you guys. And I'm super excited to see where everyone does. Thank you. Congratulations, Adi. Congratulations. For Master in Digital Marketing, Francisca Pinto. Congratulations, Francisca. Some words you would like to share with us? Yay. <laughs> yes, I want to thank everyone, especially Annie, for embarking me on the journey of creating and at me we can time handle thank you very much francisca and congratulations again continuing we have uh lena Drafin. congratulations oh. to you well, I thank you so much for making this year a great experience. I have found so many friends and I hope we keep in touch a lot. So thanks. And I will never forget Harbor Space. We wish you the best also in, the, in your journey. <laughs> thank you. Master in Digital Marketing, Usama Anwar Matu. And Usama, are you here with us? I don't think uh, you're here. So we will continue with the ceremony. And congratulations for another master in digital marketing to the master of Banana Academy, <laughs> AJ Rigo Warrior. Congratulations, AJ. Are you here with us? Yep. Uh, like I said during my talk, this is not a full stop for any of us. It's a semicolon. And <laughs> we are all outliers. We are people who were crazy enough to join a university like this. And I'm sure we are all going places. So cheers to that. Cheers, AJ. Congratulations. For Master in Data Science, Anwar Matthew. Are you there with us, Anwar? Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. We'll continue. Ah, what a pleasure. <laughs> Congratulations, Marius Klages, for the Master in High Tech Entrepreneurship and the Master in Data Science. Do you have some more words that you want to share with us? I, I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marius, and congratulations. For the Master in Data Science, Ibrahim Habib. Congratulations, Ibrahim. Um, any words you would like to share with us if you're here? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mitch and everyone. It has been amazing and challenging, very challenging here. So thank you for this amazing experience. Thank you, Ibrahim. Congratulations. And congratulations to another master in data science, to Shania Sanjit Mehta. Are you there, Shania? Yes, um, thank you so much for the amazing year. It's been a really fantastic experience here and looking forward to see what everyone does in the future. All the best. Congratulations, Shania. All the best to you too. For our next master in data science, Khaled Fadel. Congratulations, Khaled. We're thank really you. proud of you. I don't know if you're still on the call with us. Yes, uh, so thank you very much for this year. I think it's it was life changing and I I have met a lot of friends and I hope they will become lifelong friends. And 
Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. And our first master in fintech. Congratulations to Shoria Singha for completing the master in fintech. Do you have some words to share? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, just like to thank everyone, especially Mitch, for letting me take all those data science courses again and again and again and again and again throughout the year. And thanks to Eric and Svetlana, you know, guys really uh, boosted my morale, especially with the way it is outside the university. You know, the whole world is kind of messed up, but it was an interesting year for sure. And I really look forward to the next few months and the next few years and so on. So thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. And we... We are excited to see where life will take you. For our next, we have our Master in High Tech Entrepreneurship, Stephanie Kegman. Congratulations, Stephanie. Some words you would like to share with us. Thank you all. Well, I just want all of us to remember that this is not the end, but rather a real beginning, starting companies, getting jobs, now the way that we actually really want to. Thank you all. Congratulations, Stephanie. Such a pleasure having you here. Congratulations to Almas Albakirov for completing the Master in High Tech Entrepreneurship. We're going to see some of your work later on, but do you have some words to share with us now? Uh, <laughs> hi guys, thank you all. Uh, keep being amazing and keep doing amazing stuff. Thank you all. <laughs> the same to you back, Almas, the same to you. For our next Master in High Entrepreneurship, Emily Nelson. Congratulations, Emily, and we're so proud of your achievements. Any words you would like to share with us? Hi, yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, everyone for making this year so incredible for me and incredibly memorable. Um, this is the first time I've actually ever enjoyed an academic experience uh, in my life. So this really, really stands out. And I'd like to obviously thank every professor um, individually, but a huge thank you to Svetlana as well. Uh, and to you, Mitch, for putting up with my uh, incessant emails. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone, and also for letting me take the Stanford Accelerator Program. I had a wonderful time, thank you. You're more than welcome, Emily. And for our next diploma, we have... Anna Francesca Peixoto de Moura. <laughs> Congratulations for completing your master in direction design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear the laugh. <laughs> You can do this. We, we didn't hear your, your words, uh, Francesca. <laughs> you, you left really fast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, first to my dad and mom that I wouldn't be there with, without their support. So thank you so much for my classmates and for the teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. <laughs> Good. For our next Master in Interaction Design, we have Ankit Karnani. Congratulations, Ankit. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity. And Congratulations, Ankit. It was a pleasure. It was really, truly really a pleasure. And also, congratulations for completing the master in interaction design to Ege Suaka. Are you here, Ege? Maybe not at this moment. <laughs> Congratulations, I guess. So we will move to our next Master in Interaction Design. Congratulations to Federico Girotto for obtaining the degree. Federico, any words Hi, you want guys. to ask? Thank you so much. So I came here to learn something different and I really learned uh, something more. And especially I met a lot, lot of interesting people. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Federico. Thank you. And congratulations as well for completing the Master in Interaction Design to Reno Anand Nilangeka. Hey. Thank you, it's been a ride, it's been awesome. I've learned a lot, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Reno, congratulations. Next, Master in Interaction Design, another of amazing co-workers. Congratulations to Sonia Kuo for obtaining the degree of Master in Interaction Design. Congratulations, Sonia. Any words? <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, it's, yeah, I've really loved getting to know some of you uh, over the year and it's been a journey. It hasn't always been easy. Um, and just thanks to everyone. I know it's a labor of love for, for everyone who's here in the community. So thanks and congrats to everyone. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs>
Congratulations as well for completing the master in interaction design to Takin Mali. Takin, we have you here in the call. I don't think Takin managed to, to join today, but congratulations, Takin. <laughs> Um, another of our amazing masters in interaction design, Utsav. Also, thank you for always bringing different installations around the school and keeping us entertained. Any words you would like to share? Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone back home for your support and everyone here, everyone in my class. Thank you. This has been amazing. Thank you, Utsav. Thank you. Congratulations. And another master in interaction design. Congratulations, Vatsal Shah for completing the degree. Hey, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing year. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. All my fellow students and the staff, the teachers. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, me. Congratulations. Uh, for the next Master in Interaction Design, congratulations to Jasha Rai. What a pleasure to have you here with us. Some words that you would like to share with us. Hey, hi, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Mendy, for being a constant support. Ege and all of my friends. It's been quite a journey. Love you all. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Congratulations as well to Yi Shang for completing the Master in Interaction <laughs> Design and for all your great illustrations throughout the year that always make us laugh. <laughs> thank you Here. so much. Yeah. Huh? Some words you want to share with us here. Tell us a little bit. Okay. Thank you so much. I really hope that my illustration brings some fun to you. And it was definitely a unique experience at Harvard Space. And uh, it was amazing to meet all your amazing super guys and girls. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for the hard work and the comics. Thank you very, very, very much. For next master in interaction design, we have Leonin Leon Baigay. Congratulations, Leonin. We're so proud of you. Any words you would like to share with us? Yeah, thanks to Harbor Space. It was a really life-changing experience. And I hope that we will find whatever we, we are searching for in the future. So yeah, thanks a lot to everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations also to our next master in interaction design, to Araya Wongwan. Araya. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that diploma. <laughs> Araya, some words you would like to share with us before you escape back to the couch? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much to Mitch, um, especially and the team for helping me so much um, with my classes and also my classmates that I got that, to know them during quarantine and it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Araya. Thank you very much. For our next Master in Interaction Design, we have Roy Korn. Roy, are you here with us? <laughs> Um, I'll thank I you don't think so. Well, congratulations, and we hope to see you soon. Congratulations as well for completing the master in interaction design to Michel Gailhack. Are you there, Michel? Michel, congratulations to you too, and we hope to, to see you here soon. And last but not least, we have another master in interaction design. Congratulations, you and Kim. Uh, once again, for all the love and all the smiles that you brought, are you here with us for some words? No, I don't think so, but congratulations. Moving now on to Master in Robotics. Congratulations, Dane Peter Hyamans, for completing your Master in Robotics. <laughs> Dane, we saw you in the jungle earlier. Are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for Remy Robotics and Harbor Space for collaborating to give us such an amazing opportunity. It was unforgettable. Um, thank you, Harbor Space team, for everything you did and to all the professors and to all my fellow classmates. Um, I'm sorry it was only one year with you guys, actually even less, because we had a few classes, but 
I uh, really miss you guys and I hope to go see you guys soon. Um, and yeah, just stay healthy throughout this time. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, Dan. For our next Master in Robotics for Hiromi Horimoto. Congratulations, Hiromi. I think you're not in the cold today, but we send you big warm regards from Barcelona. And congratulations for another Master in Robotics to Ilya Skapenko. Ilya, do we have you here? I also think Ilya didn't manage to join today, but once again, congratulations. Good. Uh, this concludes all the diplomas, so it's going to be messy a bit, but everyone unmute yourself and just clap. I want everyone to just unmute yourselves and really, really clap as much as you can for all of you, because congratulations, you are an awesome generation and you deserve all the love and all the life that you will get in the future. Congratulations and all that. <laughs> Harbor Space is your home and forever will be your home. And yeah, I'm so proud to, to be able to present a new initiative that uh, we called it the Student Trajectory Award. So every year we try to recognize a student that has been with us for for some time, but at the same time has contributed, has worked with us, has worked with the students, and you you pretty much everyone will know who he is. And I want to present this really special award to a really special person. I want to congratulate Pranav Joy for the Student Trajectory Award. Congratulations, Pranav. And now, um, I guess you have a surprise for us. Yeah, yeah. so. Oh, yes. Screen. Yep. Oh, uh, I think you have to stop sharing yeah. first. We will stop sharing. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, is that it? Is that the button? Please be the button. Yes, that is the button. All right. Um, I I know most most of you are expecting me to give like a really funny presentation, but you have to really understand this is a very serious thing. I cannot make jokes about this. Aggravation. The state of becoming worse or more. Wait. Oh, you mean graduation. Oh, okay. Thank God I came prepared for that. How do I condense three years into a five minute speech? And that was the challenge I had to solve. Well, here's how. Um, when you hear the words graduation speech, you might think about the classes you took, the internships you did, the time you spent not sleeping. But today I wanna to talk about literally everything else you do in the span of three years here in Barcelona. Your first day here in Barcelona will be a real surreal experience. You will take a Barcelona cab for the first and the last time. Take the next day to explore Barcelona, visit the infamous Sagrada Familia, go tan at the beach and get pickpocketed at La Rambla. And then take the rest of the day reminiscing about that stolen wallet. Now that you've gotten a truly authentic Barcelona experience, head on over to Harbor Space. I mean, Harbor Space. Meet your new peers and professors as you spend the rest of your day defining what a startup is. Take the next couple of days to go submit your documents for your NIA and finally head on over to experience some authentic, wait, no, you have one more document to submit. Once that's done, you can get ready to try some, by no, wait, no, you have to book an appointment first. But once that settles, you can finally head on over to, in, to the incomparable and ever-expanding Spanish cuisine of paella, jamón, cheese, and pan con tomate. It's about two weeks in, so it's time for a regularly scheduled programming of Climbing Montserrat. This is an emotionally enriching journey, although it's quite physically taxing. Well, back to work. It's day 25, so you're still extremely motivated and ready to do this. It's about a month in, so it's time to get that Airbnb, get rid of that Airbnb and start looking for an apartment. Oh wait, this is actually a nice apartment. Ignore what I just said, I think I'm gonna go for this one. <sighs> Let's keep on ahead to day 60, where our first few Harbor Space activities start taking shape, like Halloween or Friendsgiving. <sighs> Friendsgiving, when incomparable company meets unrelenting food, it's the absolute best, trust me. 
Barcelona is chock full of hackathons, so go on ahead, win one, and then proceed to lose the next five. And now it's time for winter holidays to kick in. If you're from Europe, take this time to explore different countries in the continent and gain a deeper understanding of culture and heritage. If you're literally from anywhere else, proceed to stare at your NIA status page till they approve your visa. Hey, um, maybe take this time to learn some Spanish. You know, I mean, you're here, you have some spare time. Start learning before giving up a week later and going back to saying una cerveza, por favor. Well, what do you know? It's almost uh, time for the famously intense nine week module by Irene. If you're an interaction design student for the next few weeks, cafes are your best friend because more, more and more coffee starts to flow through your veins. And what do you mean you close at 11 p.m.? I still have 300 wireframes to complete. Well, if you're not an interaction design student, watch from afar and mock them menacingly. Now that those stressful weeks are over, maybe throw a party and then get yelled at by an old Catalan lady, only for you to think, maybe I should change apartments. Let's skip on ahead, to, uh, skip ahead in time to statistics class towards the end of the year. Boy, if you thought statistics was hard, try taking statistics at 5 p.m. Oh, what's this? Is that, is that what I think it is? A wild Nia card appears. Yes, you can finally travel again. Maybe you should save it for after graduation. Um, okay, it's almost time to watch more than half of your friends graduate and leave you here. Probably the biggest, sound, the, the biggest downside of being a bachelor student is watching your friends leave. Wait, what? The visa's already expired? So yeah, go through the same process all over again to renew it, but with more steps. Now, take a minute to um, come to terms with whether or not you should start hating tourists yet, seeing as to how you're totally incorporated into the Spanish society. Take a week or two to explore the entirety of Barcelona to find the best patatas bravas in town, only to realize it was right under our noses. It's literally 200 meters from Harbor Space. Trust me, it's the best. Um, now spend the rest of the week trying to work out all of that patatas bravas you just had. Like I said, you're practically Catalan now. So go protest for the Catalonian independence and then go protest against the Catalonian <laughs> independence. I mean, just protest, trust me. Like I said, <laughs> now that it's a little over a year in, you need to start thinking about your capstone project, putting a team of friends together, have an idea, change it. Maybe the first one was good. Now let's pivot. If you're not feeling inspired, you should take a siesta. Siesta didn't help. Maybe you should switch apartments. Unless, nah, just pivot. Ah, it's time again for graduation round two. Don't worry, you have one more to go. Uh, and you get to see all of your friends go off. Yeah, it never gets easier. Oh, what's that light at the end of the tunnel? Space bar? Maybe 2020 is going to be great. No, quarantine was hard. Realizing that you can't hang out with your friends because of COVID and then realizing you wouldn't have hung out with them anyway. With that, introducing Zoom. Try connecting to a Zoom class, then spend the next 15 minutes trying to connect to a Zoom class. God, why is the Wi-Fi so bad? Maybe I should change apartments. Now with T minus 60 days, oh wait, no, I have extra slides. How did this happen? Well, skipping ahead because you have a million dollar idea and you're in, you turn realized it's actually a million dollar in depth idea. Well, you have T minus 185 le days left for graduation. So you don't have time to pivot. So ain't nobody got time for that. So it's day 930. Wow, that's a lot of days. Now you've started building a prototype. You have an idea. It's T minus 150 days to graduation. You found it. You're now going for job interviews because maybe if the startup doesn't work out, you should still have a job. And T minus 100 days, 20 days to graduation, you successfully landed a job. But turns out you still have to have a capstone project because you do require that to graduate. So with 60 days left for graduation, Zoom meetings still don't connect. Oh, wait. Yeah, those slides are way too messed up. But now you have an idea. You've started working on it. You've unrelentingly worked on it for days on end. And time's running up. You have only 30 days left and you're only halfway there. But persevere. Put that last bit of strength in and you come out the other side victorious and you have 10 days left to spare before graduation. Maybe you can take those 10 days to just relax and rest. T minus five days left for graduation. Someone asked me, would you like to give me, give a speech for graduation? I was like, because I'm a masochist. I was like, sure, why not? 
So how do you even begin condensing three years into five minutes? Well, here's how. Congratulations, Pranav, and thank you for sharing your journey with us. Uh, we were, as we can see, that is the student trajectory, and we're, we're really happy for you. Good, so... Need some water, Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you could mute yourself, Pranav, and you should get some water. I think it will, it will make you good. Okay, so now for the next part of the presentation. Uh, we're really, really happy to show you something that uh, we've been working for. Uh, I want to give a special shout out for Mass for all the hard work that he has put here. And I think we're ready to share the graduation video with you. So here it goes. Hi, my name is Arjun. Hola, mi nombre es Cristian Duque. Is me usama Anwar Macho. Mono me es Gonsu. Salem me nangato Malijan. Wukunko Brenda Tsepi Pitsi. Hi, Raja. Raja Sonia. Akungan ke si Shannon. Aslan, es mi Ibrahim. Salem, mi nang es mi Maumaz. Privet, mi nang zavod Kirill. Yasas, Melena Maria. Namaskar, uh, Amon Nam Nurezama. Bonjour, je m'appelle Nathalie. Ahla Nana, it's me, John. First days are amazing. Seeing the beautiful campus for the first time. Just the interactions that I've had. People from different countries. Taking Hannes' class. This is when a group of us uh, went to Sieges. And the parties in our space. The time that me and Maria performed for a room full of people, that was definitely next. Like a highlight of my experience. Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving dinner. The uh, Halloween celebration. The time that we spent nine weeks with Irene. I remember the last day after Irene's midterm. Surviving the second week of Irene and going to get pizza together. I remember like looking at Javier and it was like under the table and Ankit was dying in the, co in the couch. Everyone was like just lay on the floor. My second module with David. Really loved spending time at the space bar. Not just because the coffee was so good, but because the people were great. I think the thing I'm most proud of is never giving up, always continuing. I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I can overcome my language barrier. Gaining confidence. I guess my presentation skills. Huge personality change. When Anton says no more comment when I switched my background from finance to data science. Has been able to manage a double load of fintech and data science. Getting these two diplomas done. The first ever paper publication. Start working with them robotics. Bronze medal in Swerg. Third place at an aviation hackathon uh, in security. So we are going to join a CERN entrepreneurship uh, student program. After only working on Identity for two months, we got into an interview with Y Combinator. Award we won for the Vans campaign we did. The award of the young ones that we participated in. Hyperspace encouraged me to actually fulfill my dreams and start my new startup. Definitely working for my capstone, Bananas Academy. Starting two different companies. The company I've built across the three years, it's a game studio for audio devices. Starting my own company at the age of 21. Well, I am starting a company. I don't know, like I graduated, that's the thing. We are living in the best of the times that I can think of uh, as a fine knowledge of history and whatever is to come. I think now more than ever, the world needs creative, empathetic, uh, determined entrepreneurs like the ones I got to meet at Harbor Space. So I can't wait to see the next Airbnb come from the Harbor Space family. I hope my classmates continue to raise the bar. You are amazing. I want everyone to stay positive, curious, and have a lot of hugs in their life. Want to see you all again one day <laughs> or a few days. The quote is from Dead Poor Society. So no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can actually change the world. I think that I do so much thanks to all of you. And 
I wish you all the best and I'm just going to miss everyone so much. So thank you for everything. That's for all of you, uh, with all, all the love. <laughs> Good. Okay, so now uh, we're not going to go to the keynote. I, it's part of the closing speech. So now I get to share some, some words with you, okay? Good evening, graduates, parents, and faculty. First of all, we want to thank you for being here tonight and sharing this moment with us. Today, we are here to celebrate the closing of a cycle and the beginning of many new ones. We are truly so thankful we have been able to share this journey with you and that you allowed for Harvard Space to become your home. We all know it's been a challenging year and it has certainly not been short on surprises. It almost felt like a dream. I know that when writing a speech, we should try to stay away from topics that seem cliche. But after this surreal year, I wanna to talk to you about dreams. I'm someone who dreams a lot, no matter if I'm sleeping or I'm wide awake. The capacity of building worlds, narratives, and complex scenarios within our minds has always fascinated me. A capacity that lies within every single one of us. The power of imagining fiction. And even though we dream fiction, it has an impact on who we are and most importantly on who we become. So we could say, so we could say that in reality, it is fiction that allows us to imagine unimaginable things but sometimes we forget about it. We stop dreaming. The noise is too loud. The light becomes too bright. Life becomes too serious. And in such event, you should never forget that dreams don't just happen. You build them, you create them, you design them. So today I'm not gonna go the cliche way and tell you to keep dreaming. I'm gonna ask you to never stop building your dreams to build a future where you find your purpose, a future where love is all around you and you find yourself doing something that makes you feel whole, a preferred future for you, but also for humanity. I ask you to dream of who you want to become, to dream of the extraordinary, of achieving results that might seem impossible while being awake. But ultimately, I ask you from the bottom of my heart to become your biggest supporter. So when someone tells you that you must be dreaming, you answer you are. So when you get the dream job, you go for it. And when someone tells you that what you believe it's only a dream, you remember that a dream is only a dream if you forget about it when you wake up. Because if you remember it and you work towards it, that's how dreams become a reality. We love you and we thank you for being part of a dream. Congratulations, class of 2020. We will miss you a lot. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mitch. From the heart and to all, the Harvest Face family loves you. And we have one more, one more thing to show you and, and to share with you. Please remember that all the videos will be available in the um, in the landing page for the graduation video for the graduation. Okay. All right. Um, so, graduating students, I think uh, I think you know what this is. It's been a very long process, uh, and uh, I really appreciate all of the patience that you guys have shown, and uh, most importantly, the enthusiasm you have for just trying to do something something different for really trying to, to push forward and, and create a community in, in a time when it's, it's very, very difficult, when people have felt um, very much alone, when people have felt um, like this won't end. Um, and in times like these, it's, it's really when uh, we have to come together and we have to stand by each other. So um, we, working together with the team and uh, with all of the graduating students, we put together this, this short video, um, this short sing-along video. I want to take a moment to, um, to congratulate Almaz for all of his hard work uh, working with the team against impossible deadlines um, and against the odds. So please take a moment just to congratulate Almaz both for the graduation video that you saw and for putting together 
this uh, this this very very cool sing along. And I just want to thank all of you um, on behalf of the team, on behalf of the university, um, for really just showing the kind of enthusiasm and passion that uh, the world needs. So thank you so much, everyone, and uh, I hope you enjoy this um, as much as we did making it. So thank you very much. When the night has gone and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me And darling, darling, stand By me, oh, stand by me Oh, stand Stand by me Stand by me It's the sky that we look upon Should tumble and fall All the mountains Should tumble to the sea I won't cry I won't cry No, I won't Shed a tear It is long As you stand, stand by me. So, darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand. Stand by me. Stand by me. Stand by me. Congratulations, everyone. Um, from the Harvest Place family, we wish you the best. We wish you constant growth, constant love, and For us to be reunited again, once again, remember, Harvard Space is your home and will forever be your home. Students, see you at the party. All the love. Unmute yourself all again. And once again, let's make the mess and just clap together. Hi guys, how, how are y'all doing? Hello. <laughs> Yo, what's up?
What's happening now? That's all good. It's all good. We we we're here at the uni. There's the staff members yeah. assaulting people. <laughs> <laughs> Is this live streamed? <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, yes. So Thank good. you, Grayson. So good. You, you piece of shit. <laughs>